12 Democrat Grid with Jason Copeland. Jason, walk us through this. Yeah, we're looking at really a political crisis. The Democrats are currently searching uh, basements and uh, creepy backyard sheds huh. in search of somebody who was kidnapped at a young enough age that they have no online presence. That is a very interesting Could tactic. Be an option. And the GOP has been looking at this young man. This is a 20 year old Jeevis Jones. He's currently living in Appalachia with his uh, fundamentalist Christian grandmother and no so, electricity. So Jeevis has no Facebook page. Jeevis does not. In fact, he's completely illiterate. And uh, the Republican Party has begun grooming him for uh, a possible candidacy in 2036. All right. Well, at least there's someone. Thank you, Jason Copeland. Thanks, Andrea. This is Free Talk Live. Welcome to the live Saturday edition of the program. Joining you in the studio tonight, it's Ian here. And Mark. Our toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. You may call in about anything that you'd like, but of course we bring things to the table that you might find interesting. We've talked uh, in the past few weeks, uh, several weeks I guess at this point, four or five weeks, about the beheadings uh, that have gone on, the alleged beheadings uh, that have gone on over with the the ISIS folks, and I guess we should also say allegedly the ISIS folks, right? Some somebody released a video that makes it look like uh, some American photojournalist type, or one American photojournalist. The other guy is oh no, two from America. The third guy in line who has yet to be executed is from Britain. So two American photojournalists have been executed. And, and he's some kind of contractor. The British guy is some kind of cr contractor, right? Yeah, I think he's like a security contractor. Anyway, we've talked about the videos themselves, and there's some controversy over whether or not the videos are actually legit. You know, did the beheadings actually occur the way the video kind of looks when they're slicing at the necks? It doesn't seem like any blood comes out, and then it cuts away. It, it fades to black really quickly after this, the slicing begins. The picture and the video afterwards of the corpse looks pretty realistic. So some people believe they're legit. Others believe they're not. And well, I don't know what the truth is. One thing's for certain is, is that uh, they, they're, they're certain that the video's been messed with in some way. Well, who's certain that the video's well, been messed with? That's what it's come out with. Uh, the you know Different news sources have said that, yeah, something weird with the video. Well, but, there was, hold on, there was, so the first thing was the James Foley video, right? and the U.S. government said, this is legit, and then later, some independent video analyst was hired by, I think, the Telegraph in the U.K., uh, a, a forensics, you know, video forensic analyst, he looked at it and came up with some things that said, look pretty suspicious about the video. Um, you know, that, that could just simply mean that he doesn't believe that it was legit. You know, whatever was being shown was legit. It could have been staged to some extent. I don't know what the truth is. I'm not here to kind of stir, stir up that argument, just kind of giving some background for folks who may not be aware of the videos of which we're speaking. And you and I, Mark, we did view both of them initially. I didn't want to. They're not terrible because there's no blood. There's no gore. But at, the uh, end, at the end, I mean, you know, it, there's this like, still shot kind of thing. Yeah, there's a corpse shot with uh, the head uh, laying on top of the body at both of the, the videos that have been released thus far. So, you know, I'm sure there's conspiracy theories out there. Is, you know, is this ISIS or is this some sort of CIA group or whatever? To me, that doesn't really matter. What's interesting is the, uh, the human story, the human side of this, because whether or not the conspiracy is true, a lot of people still believe that these guys are dead. Right, because right. for the, for the conspiracy to be true that uh, they're not actually dead, that complicates matters quite. That's a bit. what I have to go with yeah. um, in my mind. This is a really weird video. These guys are dead. That's what I have to come up with. So either way, the folks who love those individuals in this uh, the case we're going to share with you, James Foley's parents, things have not been very easy for them. Now it's difficult enough to know that your son is in the uh, uh, the hands, the clutches of some killers. That's that's a pretty difficult thing to have to grapple with. Um, and then to ultimately find out that he had been beheaded, I'm sure, is, is also really hard to deal with. Yeah. But to on top of that, during all of that strife and difficulty that the family has gone through, then they had to deal with the U.S. federal government. Here's the story from ABC News. The mother of slain American journalist James Foley said she wasn't necessarily surprised that the U.S. government threatened her family with prosecution should they raise money to pay her son's ransom. I didn't even know there was a ransom for him. That's interesting. 
but she was astounded by how such a devastating message was delivered. She says, I was surprised there was so little compassion. And I have to say, I'm not surprised because government isn't really known for being compassionate. They don't really care what you think about them. But they're a monopoly, so it doesn't really matter what you think about the government. Right. They're going to do what they're going to do, and there's not much you can really do about it. But in this case, she can speak out, and I'm glad she's doing that. Diane Foley is her name. She talked to ABC News uh, about the three separate warnings she said U.S. officials gave the family about the illegality of paying ransom to the terror group ISIS. She said, it just made me realize these people are talking, excuse me, that these people talking to us had no idea what it was like to be the family of someone abducted. I'm sure the U.S. official didn't mean it in the way he said it, but we were between a rock and a hard place. We were told we could do nothing. Meanwhile, our son was being beaten and tortured every day. Mm. Earlier this week, five current and former officials with direct knowledge of the Foley case confirmed that the alleged threats were made. Uh, One former official who advised the family said, quote, it was an utterly idiotic thing to do that came across as if the U.S. official had the compassion of an anvil, he said. Diane Foley told ABC News earlier this week that warnings over the summer came primarily from a highly decorated military officer serving on the White House National Security Council. James Foley's brother, Michael, also told ABC News he was directly threatened with possible prosecution by a State Department official. The mom said, quote, it was very upsetting because we were essentially told to trust that the way they were handling things would bring our son home. Mm. Now, why would you believe that the U.S. government would do anything at all to bring uh, the, this man home? Well, I don't think that, that that's their greater concern. Their greater concern, when you say something like, we do not negotiate with terrorists, mm-hmm. you are not taking a stand that intends to take care of one individual. It is a stand that uh, is intended to cause sort of the greater good. You know what I mean? Mm. It's you know sacrificing the individual in the uh, the hopes of the greater good because ISIS has gained essentially nothing or ISIL or IS. I'm not exactly sure what these people are. Okay. I certainly, the Islamic State. I don't think that. they're a state. Um, they they pretend Isn't that what they call to be themselves state. allegedly. Yes. Right. Well, yeah. I could call myself the Jolly Green. Why would Green they jo- not be a state? I mean, the state's just an idea. If they want to run around calling themselves the state, why is that any less legitimate than, uh, you know, the city of Keene or state of New Hampshire? Historical momentum. They have none. Um, Boys, you've got to be at what point? How long does do you have to you know pretend to be a state before it becomes real? I don't know. I think you have to a, a, a period of time where mm-hmm. there are no pretenders to your throne. Um but that's not, you know. There are a group of men taking over allegedly uh, areas of land by violence. To me, that makes them a state. They certainly believe that, but I don't know that they have taken them over. They have. Okay, that's what I've heard. Right. I, mean, I don't live there. I, I don't know. I oh. mean, I don't know. Um, are they, <laughs> you know, they're going to get blown up if they're not careful, is really the end of that story. So they're not much of a state. But that doesn't, that's really not the issue with the Foley thing. I would say I don't know whether paying this ransom would have resulted in Foley being released or not. But as the parent of this individual, I would have liked to have had that choice and not be threatened with jail time as a result of doing it. Yeah. Um, I mean, I think that this makes I think that this makes the United States government to some extent culpable for the execution of this man by uh, closing off the avenue of these parents for paying this uh, ransom. I'm telling you. I don't. Th- I don't even know whether they would have given the kid up. I suspect somebody willing to lop off the head of someone is not going to be, uh, you know, really great at mm-hmm. giving their, you know, when they give their word. But then I could be wrong. So apparently there was an alleged uh, rescue attempt by the U.S. government along with uh, some other hostages from an ISIS stronghold in early July. But by the time the commandos arrived at the location, the hostages have been moved. Diane, the mom, says the family believed they knew where their son was being held prior to the execution, but other than the July rescue mission, it didn't seem like anything was being done. She said, but we're not politicians. We're not government people. We don't know. She said the problem was the family had no idea because the government didn't tell them. At times, she said they had to beg the government for information about their son. She said we were an annoyance, it felt, at some level. They didn't have time for us. 
Today, White House spokes bureaucrat Josh Ernest said the government officials were in constant contact with the Foley family and declined to comment on the alleged ransom warnings, telling reporters that he's not going to be in a position to detail the kinds of conversations that took place so often between members of the administration and the Foley family. So it's their, op- their opinion that they were engaged in open dialogue with the family, but the mom saying uh, we had to beg for attention. And they hardly gave it to him. Well, um, what do they mean by open dialogue? This is just sort of the lies that, of, that are issued inside Absolutely. the language. You know, I, I, I speak to some friends once a year. Am I in constant contact with them throughout the years? I'm wondering what you think, dear listener, about the idea of these folks being threatened over raising ransom money. Should they have faced threats for trying to do everything they could? to save their son and their loved one. 855-450-FREE is the toll-free number. 855-450-3733. It's Free Talk Live. Attention. Renew is currently seeking participants who are dealing with stress and unhappiness. If you are experiencing one or more of the following symptoms, you are eligible to participate in the trial and receive a free two-week supply of the mood-boosting supplement, Renew. To be eligible, your symptoms may include fatigue, hopelessness, tension, negative mood, anxiety, or lack of sleep. Renew is an all-natural, doctor-recommended supplement that will help boost your mood and give you more energy right away. Renew has been featured on Oprah and The View and has already helped over a million people feel better naturally. Now you are eligible to participate in the free trial if you or someone you know are experiencing symptoms of stress and unhappiness. Call now to participate in the trial and receive a free two-week supply of Renew. To participate in the Renew trial and get a free supply, call 1-800-553-7444. 1-800-553-7444. Call 1-800-553-7444. 1-800-553-7444. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. Farmers keep livestock lean and healthy with a mineral-rich diet. Then, before market, they cut off minerals, leaving them to crave high-calorie grains. If weight control is this easy, why prescribe surgery for humans? Introducing Longevity. You could avoid 900 diseases by getting 90 essential nutrients from Longevity. Check out 90 for Life at tobeyoungagain.com or call 855-79-YOUNG. That's 855-79-YOUNG or tobeyoungagain.com. Longevity. It's all about saving money, getting healthy, and creating wealth. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! Jesus. On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati. DVD available now at GunsAndWeed.com or on Amazon. That's GunsAndWeed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's GunsAndWeed.com. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at LRN.FM? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet, around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at LRN.FM. That's LRN.FM. Shiny badges on your jacket. Shiny badges. This is Davi Barker from ShinyBadges.com, and I just want to personally apologize for airing a jingle week after week, month after month, that turned out to be such an infectious brain worm. So to make it up to you, I'm offering a free gift. The next time you make a purchase at ShinyBadges.com, write worms in the transaction comments, and I'll send you something weird. 
Help get LRN.FM into more ears. Visit promote.lrn.fm for a free bumper sticker, flyers, banners, graphics, and more. Promote.lrn.fm. It's Free Talk Live. Take control toll-free at 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. Maybe you want to comment on the James, uh, the family of James Foley. He is now allegedly decapitated uh, in the Middle East by some alleged ISIS folks. And the family is now speaking out, saying that they felt like they were treated with very, very little compassion by the federal government agents who had informed them on multiple occasions that were they to attempt to raise money for ransom for their son, that they would be charged criminally, and they themselves would end up in a cage, not so different, likely, from their own son. Likely the beheading wouldn't occur. The beheading wouldn't occur if they raised the money? Well, they no, that they, wouldn't, they wouldn't be beheaded if they were put in a U.S. cage. Oh, right. Yeah. No, that's likely you're right. Correct about that. They're much more valuable uh, to the prison industrial complex alive. Alive. Sure. Yeah. Because, well, the, the jail gets money for every uh, inmate. That's pr- not the case for the folks over, uh, you know, in the Middle East. Toll free number is 855-450-FREE. So I'm wondering how you feel about the idea of it being illegal to raise money for ransom. If you get uh, somebody is, that you love is taken by some alleged terrorists it's a crime, according to the U.S. federal government, to raise some money for that. Toll free again, 855-450-FREE. Skype username is LRN.FM. And want to make sure that you know about ModUp.net. It's modafinil. If you've been uh, needing focus and feeling fatigued in life, trying to get that extra edge when it counts, check out modafinil from modup.net. Studies show one in five students use this cognitive enhancer, offering multiple benefits, including a double-digit increase in short-term memory, as well as fighting off fatigue and greater focus overall so you can get things done. Businessmen around the world are also talking about modafinil from modup.net. It's making the difference in their work, giving them the critical edge they need. At modup.net, they provide the highest premium quality modafinil with the best potency, so you enjoy significant results. That's why they're the number one sponsor of Reddit's third-party nootropic testing project. Remember, Free Talk Live's an international radio show, and modup.net ships worldwide. It's your responsibility to know if local prescription requirements and laws apply. So check out modup.net. Order with Bitcoin. You'll save 33% and use code FTL and you'll get 10 free tablets with your order. So again, that's code FTL, world-class service at a great price for modafinil at modup, M-O-D-U-P dot net. So your comments are welcome on the beheading question. Should it be illegal for someone to raise money for ransom to free their loved one? Hopefully, From the clutches of their kidnappers. In this case, if the kidnappers are uh, members of ISIS or some other terrorist group, the federal government seems to be saying that that's illegal and you'll be criminally charged for it. I wonder if the same thing applies to like a regular mafia. If, you know, the Italian mafia kidnaps somebody that you love and is holding them for ransom, is it also illegal to raise money to try to get them back? Well, one thing is for sure there's there's not nearly as much kidnapping going on in the United States as there there was you know, 75 years ago, it was much more commonplace. So mm-hmm. the, the federal government has did a reasonably good job of stopping that. How do you know the federal government stopped kidnapping in the United States? Um, OK, so I can only take the word of history, um, mm-hmm. you know, history books. And the claim is, is that the FBI took it really seriously. Hmm. All right. Well, I don't know what the truth is about that, but it's an interesting claim. The toll-free number again is 855-450-FREE. Let's go to Crichton in Mobile. I've got some interesting quotes from some of the bureaucrats in the case of the federal government threatening this family, James Foley's family. We'll get to those. Crichton, you're with us, though. Go ahead. Yeah. Hi, guys. How are you tonight? Go ahead with your thoughts, Crichton. Well, this subject keeps coming up, about, particularly about around ISIS, and I keep hearing you guys talk about it, and something keeps get re- gets repeated several times that I feel is a fallacy. Okay, sure. What's that? I feel like I need to talk about it. Great. Um, That's why we're here. Go for it. Well, the, the simple one is pretty easy to correct. The first one is um, that personally owned guns are not actually banned in Liechtenstein. It's just culturally uncommon, but that's small. Um, what I want to really talk about is, is Mark's perception about 
the causes of conflict between the Western world and extremist Muslim uh, organizations. All right. Um, it is my impression that Mark believes that this is a problem that's, that's occurred over decades and that it's a response to meddling from Western governments in Middle Eastern affairs. Well, sort of. I would say that I would think that there would be a certain amount of uh, extremist Muslims uh, in the Middle East anyway, but I don't think that they would matter that much. In the same way that there's extremist Christians that maybe let people, you know, snakes bite them and, and things like that, um, they are relatively irrelevant in U.S. culture because people tend to rally around, um, you know, when, they're, when their lives are threatened, they tend to rally around religion. Well, that that's somewhat true, but the problem is is that historically that's not accurate. Okay. Um, there is a lot of a lot of evidence that this cultural conflict predates even the US government. Which and cultural conflict are we referring to? There is a culture clash between a certain subset of Islam and strong followers of Islam and the Western cultures in general. Okay. Um, and it, the reasons are very complex and very old. Uh, but to say that it's that the U.S. government started it. No, I don't say that. No, no, I don't say thing. that. Um, I would say that, in fact, these people, um, Osama bin Laden's quoted as saying, it's not like we attack Sweden or something to that effect. And it's the meddling of, I get, I get what they think in many cases about the West Western cultures. I've got that. But largely they wouldn't care to export their violence if it wasn't for the meddling. Absolutely true. I mean, if you look at what Osama bin no, no, Laden no, 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 said. No, no, it's not true. Yeah, it's if not you look at what true, Osama regardless. bin Laden actually said, he made it pretty clear that it was all about uh, the politics of things and the U.S. government's meddling and that sort of thing. I mean, it, he never said, we hate your culture and we're upset about McDonald's and, you know, the fact that you have uh, pop music. Well, hang on. If you're going to go based bikinis. on of, of of leadership, then you need to go farther back. There are many quotes of leadership besides the, that one. Osama bin Laden is just one character in this whole long mix. Mm -hmm. And certainly the, the meddling of, 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 of Western governments certainly provides a recruitment tool. There's no doubt about that. Well, that's uh -huh. kind of what I'm saying. Like, you know, like a few people saying a few things are irrelevant to the big picture if they can't recruit. But go ahead. The, the idea that they wouldn't be able, the extremists would not be able to recruit at all uh, because it's Nobody said that. Idea. Nobody nope. said that. Well, what on. we're pointing out is they're not attacking the other countries who aren't doing the meddling. I mean, that's all. Because if you're not, not meddling, then you don't get attacked by yet. terrorism. You no, know, it's because they haven't got there yet. They have bigger fish to fry. All right, well, that's theoretical, it. and I thank you for the call tonight. It's certainly speculative. Well, I think that largely the fr the fish they would want to fry would be in the Middle East. Like Osama bin Laden's problem was with the government of Saudi Arabia, the government of of Israel. Um, you know, these were his problems, and he had to get yeah. the U.S. out of the way in order to do something about it. So he intended to start a war where the U.S. was bled of money, and he has been successful in this plan. Toll-free number tonight is 855-450-FREE. That's 855-450-3733. And even if it's true, I still don't trust the government to keep me safe. It's Free Talk Live. The human body is extraordinary. Despite all the stresses we inflict upon it, it still works hard to stay in balance. Thousands upon thousands of people rely upon heart and body extract to help their body stay balanced. This excellent 100% natural herbal formula helps maintain healthy blood pressure levels, cleans arteries, promotes good circulation, balances cholesterol, and more. HB extract paired with healthy lifestyle choices like good nutrition and exercise can give you a life free of pain, sickness, and fear. Recapture your 
your youthful vitality and experience your body healing itself with the aid of HB Extract. It's extremely effective and it starts working in just days. Visit HBExtract.com to learn more and to read scores of testimonials from satisfied customers. And we've never increased our price in over 10 years. That makes heart and body extract as great a value now as it was the first day we sold it. A healthy heart is a happy heart. Call 866-295-5305 or go to HBExtract.com. Why did you move to the Shire? I moved here to the Shire because there's other people around who take liberty just as seriously as I do. I moved to the Shire because I saw videos of people challenging authority and thought that I could get support myself. It called to me, like, do this right now. I wanted to be around people like me who got it. And once I got here, I knew there was nowhere else that I wanted to be. I've always wanted to change the world. So I moved to the Shire to join people who were actually working towards doing the same thing. The people here are awesome, loving, and positive. It was for the adventure and for the feeling of something important is happening here, and I just wanted to come to sort of be part of that. Visit ShireSociety.com to read and sign the Shire Society Declaration and learn the reasons why, if you love liberty, you should immigrate to the Shire. Plus, add yourself to the Shire map at ShireSociety.com. That's ShireSociety.com. Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at FreeRoss.org. That's FreeRoss.org. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. I've been told no in many different ways. I give you an order and you're going to obey it. Who told you you can go this way? You can do that and you have to leave here. You cannot bring signs into the rally. Walk with me. Well, I'm, I'm, no, I'm comfortable me. here, actually. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hey, 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 hey. hey. Who do you think you Excuse are? me. There is no video or audio allowed in this office. No, I have work today. This is you ain't going to make. Wait, no, no. Wait a minute. Hey! Oh my god! Unbelievable! Because you scared me! What am I being detained for? You're being served. What is this? What is this? Bureaucrats have a funny way of telling people no. That's the sound of the men working on the chain. Derek J's Victimless Crime Spree. Watch it for free and order the Director's Cut DVD at victimlesscrimespree.com. This is the Liberty Radio Network, broadcasting the latest liberty-oriented audio content 24 hours a day at LRN.FM. This is Free Talk Live. You can take control toll-free here at 855-450-FREE, though we've been talking about ISIS and terrorism and beheadings. The family of the first guy who was allegedly beheaded uh, James Foley, the photojournalist uh, from America, he uh, his family is saying they've had a terrible time dealing with the U.S. federal government. They, they've been threatened with arrest and criminal charges in prison if they tried to raise ransom money to get their son back from these people. And there's some interesting quotes here that are worthy of sharing. I'd like to I'll get to them when I can. We're going to go to your phone calls next at 855. 855- 450 free. You're welcome to share your thoughts. Should people be prohibited from raising funds for people that are that have been kidnapped? And does it only apply? I don't know. Does it only apply to supposed terrorist groups doing the kidnapping, or would uh, you know a group of local thugs would they qualify? To, you know, in that if you were going to raise money for the group of local thugs to pay them the ransom, would that be legal in that case? 
Toll-free number 855-450-FREE. You can get a free pound of coffee by simply going to coffee.freetalklive.com and signing up for the subscription there. We have teamed up with BuzzBox. This is a delicious uh, coffee <laughs> producer. They have uh, 100% organic coffee that's shade-grown and top 1% grade Arabica beans. And that in and of itself would be fine. Good coffee is good coffee. You will not find coffee that tastes better than BuzzBox. If you're buying your coffee from the store, you're not even in the ballpark. But what they do differently is, is that they allow us to participate with Kiva. And that's an organization that does microloans. So around the world, different people, we, we pick the people, we know who we're helping, and we're able to give them a loan, whether it's for a uh, car repair or, um, you know, so this one guy needed, a ta- needed to get his taxi back on the road. Another woman was uh, trying to get a sewing machine uh, put together in Uganda. Uh, another guy, he wanted to expand his appliance repair business, and he needed some money to uh, get some appliances. These are people that need a hand up. They're not looking for a handout. They pay the money back, and then we can loan the money again. This means that, you know, the coffee you drink, and you drink coffee every day, just, you know, this really can make a difference in the world. Go to coffee.freetalklive.com. Sign up for the subscription. Enjoy your free pound of coffee. Tell them if you like it. You can go there. You can cancel your subscription if you're when you're done, or you can continue getting it. And for every people, ten people that do, we get another micro loan out to another family, and we're able to help them. Coffee.freetalklive.com. All right, so we'll continue here. The toll free number is eight fifty five four fifty free. Mark's with us in St. George, Utah, listening to KZNU. Hello, Mark. Hi. <laughs> um, I just wanted to make a comment about what the last caller said, and. Um, mm-hmm. Basically, a big part of understanding why the United States' involvement with the Middle East and why al-Qaeda and uh, all their branch-off groups have such a problem with the U.S. is that I think the caller was right in saying that there is a history that you know predates that stuff. But the reason that al-Qaeda has a particular beef with America and brought their fight here on 9-11, not that that wasn't a tragedy, is that – the United States, basically, by putting soldiers onto Saudi Arabian land, was that is considered in the Muslim faith to be a violation of their most sacred areas. Well, hold on, one, so, just one moment. I mean, I, I agree that uh, people consider it a violation, but it's it's something that anyone would consider a violation, regardless of what their faith is. I mean, think about how you know people in the United States would feel if uh, the Chinese landed some troops and they started occupying their uh, their land. You know, you got troops at your neighborhood. They've got a checkpoint set up. Uh, they're harassing people. They're shooting people. Maybe even bombing people. You don't have to be a member of a religion to understand why that would be pretty upsetting, right? Oh, of course not. And I totally uh, disagree with the U.S. having bases anywhere in the right. world. But Shut them um, down. as far as like that particular situation, that was what they found to be a huge violation. And, and uh, after the Russians were in Afghanistan and the Mujahideen forces had, you know, basically pushed them out with, of course, assistance from the United States mm-hmm. by arming them, um, the... Osama bin Laden actually went to the Saudi Arabian government and the United States government and said, hey, I have all these fighters that are willing to go and to, uh, push Saddam Hussein, who they felt was not a good leader, out of Kuwait. And basically George H.W. Bush said, no, we're going to do it. And then it was rallied into this big thing that Bush was some kind of like this hero of bringing a coalition of like these freedom uh, you know, bringers to Kuwait when, in fact, the United States was his ally for a long time when he fought Iran, gave him weapons. Saddam Hussein. And so, yeah. exactly, Saddam Hussein. And so, in a way, I mean, it was kind of like all of a sudden they, the United States flip flopped and then they claimed to be the heroes. And that is kind of where this whole Al Qaeda beef originates. Good info, Mark. Thanks for sharing your thoughts tonight. I appreciate it. Uh, the toll-free number again is 855-450-FREE. And it's not like this um, This gets any better. The, the United States was fighting this, basically fighting the same organization in Iraq, goes to Libya, arms, funds uh, this organization. In Syria, arms, funds this organization. You're talking and, about the Islamic State now? Uh, yeah, basically. Al-Qaeda? Uh, uh, Al-Qaeda in Iraq okay. uh, is what it was being called back then. And it's just, Al-Qaeda is just this big uh, you know, term. It, um, and now in Iraq, bombing 
those same folks. It just mm-hmm. it's just this big whirlwind. I mean, really, what what is the plan? You, you shouldn't be fighting a war if you shouldn't be fighting a war if you don't have a plan. Oh, I if think the plan is let's drop a bunch of really expensive bombs so yeah. that we can build more expensive bombs and people in America have jobs. Why don't we just talk about that? Let's talk about <laughs> killing people for money. I mean, like that's an entirely different conversation that an American public has. Now, Mark, remember, in this country, it's supposed to be a, of the people, by the people, for the people. What a Let's joke. Let's have on. a real conversation about how we want to drop really expensive bombs on a bunch of poor people in foreign countries. I don't want that. I don't I don't, like I, I don't either, but I'd like to have that conversation rather than, hey, let's run around chasing our tail in the Middle mm. East, um, causing all kinds of havoc and upset. These people deserve to rule themselves. If that means that our puppet dictators that have been set up over the course of decades fall, I don't care. No, no, really, I don't care. So I want to get back into the quotes I promised here from uh, State Department spokesman Marie Harf. Now, this is in regards to the family of James Foley, the photojournalist who was allegedly beheaded over uh, over there by some ISIS folks in the Middle East, that uh, essentially uh, John Kerry actually spoke in this case, and he said he was taken aback and surprised by Ms. Foley's allegations. I can tell you I'm totally unaware and would not condone anybody I know of within the State Department making such statements. He was uh, referring to the, the rude manner in which that uh, the, the family was treated. According to the mom of James Foley, she mm-hmm. says they had no compassion or next to no compassion. State Department spoke, of course, the politician's going to act like, well, I'm so shocked. Uh, well, no, you know what we this- need? We need a blue ribbon panel to, dis- to, to to investigate this. This is shocking. Of course, the state is compassionate. I mean, look, look, look at what we do. We're so compassionate, murdering people all around the world. State Department spokes bureaucrat though had a better statement. This is Marie Harf. She denied the State Department told the family they could be prosecuted for paying ransom. Only the de- only that the department helps to hostage. Excuse me, helps hostage families quote understand what our laws are about terrorists or paying ransom to terrorists unquote. She went on to say, but this department would never and did not ever intend, nor do we think we ever did anything that we would consider threatening. Do you believe them? Oh, I don't think that they do. I think that the state doesn't understand what they mean, uh, what, what threatening means. Because everything that the government tells you is a threat. Yeah. So, Unless, so nor, it's like normal speaking for them is threatening. Right. It, I mean, you know, even when a police officer says, I'm going to have to ask you to look in your trunk now, mm-hmm. he's asking because he said he's going to have to ask, and he's not allowed to look in your trunk without your permission. It doesn't even sound like a question. That's right. And he would say, let me look in your trunk now. What do you think those flashing lights mean when you're when you're getting pulled over? It means if you don't pull over, you get shot or That's run off the road. That's essentially right. They'll sh- we'll shoot your tires out. We'll bang into the side of your car. Um, I'll get a bunch of my buddies out here. We're gonna throw you to the pavement, break your jaw in the process. I mean, it is a threat. That's what the government is. Exactly. When you tell a family. You'll be criminally prosecuted if you raise money to release your son from the, the, his captors. Uh, that's the definition of a threat. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Do you think people should be threatened if they want to raise ransom? It's Free Talk Live. You can also bring up whatever you want. DVD, books, music, instruments, periodicals, computers, software, electronics, photo, cell phone, office products, home and garden, bed and bath, furniture, kitchen, pet supplies, automotive, hardware, apparel, shoes, jewelry, grocery, healthcare, sports and outdoors, toys, games, used and more. It's a department store at your fingertips. Shop.freetalklive.com. Get all your shopping done, get a great deal, and a portion of your purchase goes to benefit Free Talk Live when you enter Amazon via shop.freetalklive.com. Oh, fall. A time for cooler temperatures and hot deals from America's Best Value Inn. Save 15% when you book a room online at americasbestvalueinn.com and stay now through October 23rd. Plus, you'll enjoy free continental breakfast, internet, and instant rewards through our Value Club at most of our 1,000 hotels in North America. Fall into savings this season at America's Best Value Inn. 
Healthy elimination is essential to high energy, a cheerful mood, and prevention of disease. Some of the founders of our modern holistic health thinking state that disease begins in a toxic colon. A toxic intestinal tract is the foundation for virtually all degenerative disease, and a clean and well-moving intestinal tract is the foundation of health. I just want to say that you folks have an amazing product. I've taken whey protein products for years, and I've never noticed results I have with your product. I've suffered with thoughts of constipation most of my life. Within a few days of taking One World Way, I know noticed a dramatic change. Also, in the past few years, I've experienced symptoms associated with diabetes. I feel horrible when I've had too much sugar, and I've been getting the foot pain as well. But I've noticed in the past week or so, I'm not feeling bad anymore, and the foot pain is gone. I'm just finishing up a five-pound top I ordered and just got off the phone ordering more. I love your product. Thank you. Call 888-988-3325. That's 888-988-3325. Or visit OneWorldWay.com. That's OneWorld, W-H-E-Y.com. If you're looking for work, you know the math. There are many more applicants than openings, so you need to stand out, not blend into the blah, blah, blah your interviewer is hearing from your competition. Here's a tip. In your interview, you will be judged more by the questions you ask than the answers you give. Yes, do anticipate the obvious job interview questions and prepare concise, insightful, glass half full sounding responses. And you should interview your interviewer. Seem genuinely curious about what will help get results. With money and attention so scarce now, effective communication skills have never been more important. You want to cut through the clutter. For more tips for job seekers and making all the other conversations you have more productive, hit survivalspeech.com. I'm Holland Cook. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. Ladies, with a U.S. divorce rate near 30% in this job market, looks matter. Breast enhancement or reduction, a tummy tuck, or a little lipo can work wonders on you and your confidence. With hospital rates at fractions of U.S. prices, and thanks to the recent Thai coup, unheard of low airfare and jaw-dropping deals on luxury hotel rooms. Provide a little info. Get a quote. Hit us up at asiarunlikehellguide.com. You can sign up to receive the latest about the Liberty Radio Network via our email updates at updates.lrn.fm. That's updates.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live. It's the live Saturday edition, and you can bring up anything that you want. The toll-free number here is 855-453. We've been talking about ISIS and the alleged beheadings and how the family of James Foley, who was the first alleged victim by ISIS's beheading squad, uh, then how it was they were treated and how poorly they were treated by agents of the federal government. And the family was shocked. Uh, the mother, interviewed by ABC News, pretty outraged by how little compassion these federal bureaucrats showed her and her family, threatening them ultimately with prison if they were to actually try to raise money to possibly pay a ransom for their son. We'll continue here in moments. Your thoughts are welcome. 855 450 free. On Free Talk Live, we talk about the ideas of liberty, and I recently read a new novel about the ideas of liberty. It's called Ant Farm, and it's based on the Animal Farm book that many people read in high school. It's uh, it's written in that style, and, and it's really it's got kind of that length and that feel to it. It's a book that even uh, presidential libertarian presidential candidate Gary Johnson uh, has praised. Personally, I love how it took complex issues like military protection, judicial systems, currency, and lots more, and explained it in ways that the average folks average folks could understand, even young adults, people who have never experienced the ideas of liberty before. They can easily understand it and how systems would work without government force and how state intervention screws everything up. If you're tired of explaining to some of your friends about how roads could be built in a free market, 
hand them a copy of Ant Farm. And if you're sick of explaining to other friends about how the U.S. turned into a police state, hand them a copy of Ant Farm. Stephen Aaron Gray, the author of uh, Ant Farm, is giving away the first four chapters completely free. Um, that's just about half of the book, by the way. You can download those free chapters at antfarmbook.com. If you like it, get the rest of the chapters. Finish up the story, antfarmbook.com. It is well worth your time. It's a great read, antfarmbook.com. All right, so let's go right back into your phone calls and thoughts. Will is with us in Mississippi. You're on Free Talk Live, and you're listening, uh, listening via TuneIn. Go ahead, Will. Hi, guys. How's it going? Welcome, sir. You're on the air. Uh, first off, let me apologize to any listeners that may have gotten their feathers ruffled by my speech last night. By your what last night? This, my speech last night, dropping that bomb. Uh, oh, okay. You said something you, you weren't supposed to on the radio. Go ahead. Don't worry about it. Yeah, no hard feelings, right? No hard feelings. Yep. All right. I read an article or two. Well, first of all, let me say you guys want to know what I've got on my mind. Atheism in America. All right. I read an article or two, which I unfortunately can't source, that said atheists in the United States of America are more dis- are distrusted on the level of rapists. Distrusted on the level of what? Murderers. Rapists? Rapists. You mean that the people in the United States who are not atheists look at atheists as though they are on the level of murderers and rapists? Is that what you were saying? Yes, that's that's what this article said. Mur- I have murderers can turn their point. lives around. Atheists can't. <laughs> <laughs> that's silly. I, mean, I have my opinion as to why. I'm curious as to what you guys think. Um, would you guys like to give your thoughts first, or should I? Atheists are definitely one of the most despised uh, groups of people in the United States, and it's a shame. I mean, there are a lot of good-thinking, free-thinking folks within the atheist community. Of course, there are a lot of them also who really love the state in a way that sort of some people love their God. Uh, So I think some atheists have replaced the state or their their God or replaced God with the state, which is sort of a new form of God. Um, but I, right. I, yeah, I mean, it's just always been that way. I, I was an atheist for a while, and it's, I, I guess I'm evidence too. That, that atheists can change because I'm no longer an atheist. I'm a panentheist. And, uh, right. but, you know, when I was an atheist, it was not easy. I mean, I was afraid to come out of the, the closet, so to speak, because my, I went to church with my, my family, and there, there were a lot of people who were connected to that in my life. And I felt like there would be some ostracism or some, some rudeness. Luckily, that didn't happen for me. But I also didn't keep going to church after I came out of the closet as an atheist. So who knows how I would have been received there. Right. I think it's a basic well, uh, misunderstanding as to the foundations of atheist morality. I think that people think— that is exactly, That's exactly what I was going to—that's exactly my refu- reputation of—because, you know, I feel that— the uh, argument that he is put toward atheists is if you don't believe in a Bible or a God, what keeps you from hurting people or even killing people? Mm, right. That, I think that's what you were trying to get at. I'm sorry I yeah. interrupted you. Which says, um, essentially, to the, the theist, the Christian or the Muslim or whomever, that what they're saying about themselves is, without God, I would kill people. Mm. Uh, maybe the, that's a crazy thing to say, and they don't that's mean it. Scary. It's not necessarily. <laughs> That's not necessarily what they mean when they're saying that. But, I don't but that, think, yeah, yeah. that's essentially what they're saying when they don't mean that. See, here's my belief system. I believe there's a God. I believe he built a system of reciprocity into the universe, this mm-hmm. idea of— uh, you know, Cause and call, effect. We can cause—yeah, cause and effect, karma, whatever you want to call mm-hmm. it. And so you're going to receive very bad things in your life, um, likely prison, if you— choose to kill people. Now, that um, that system— You may find yourself killed as well if you choose to kill people. You may not make it to prison. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's not a good idea to try to kill people. That system <laughs> works on atheists or uh, theists just the same, and it doesn't matter where you decide that system came from, that system of morality, that cause and effect system. Well, I think that over, the, over time, uh, people have found that cooperation works better than killing everyone. That's the factor, too. For me, what happened to me in my life is when I switched from being a Christian to being an atheist at about 15 or 16, Mm -hmm. I just couldn't— Noah's Ark? What? Um, Sodom and Babel? What? Tower of Babel? What? None of this made any sense to me. It was all, really? Hercule or uh, uh, Samson killed a thousand Philistines with the jawbone of an ass. Mm. Okay, um, like these just these were just stories, but they were presented to me as the truth. So therefore, the redemption story of Jesus was presented to me as the truth. And I, when I rejected one of these things, I rejected the whole thing. Then I was left without a foundation, a moral foundation, because I wasn't taught about the cause and effect morality. I was taught if you don't do bad things, um, if you do bad things, you'll go to hell, and if you don't do bad things, you'll go to heaven. 
or you ask for forgiveness. So or your whatever morality it is. was structured on right. man's word rather than observation and reality. Right. It, it absolutely was. Will go ahead. My way, thoughts. my way of thinking is, it is because you know some people would ask an atheist, "Well, what's your meaning in life? Why would you? Why don't you just you know lay down and die rather than live? Because it is preferable to live than to die." Yeah, I think that's obvious to um, to everyone. And, we had uh, somebody call in last week who was talking to some kids with some polio, or whose mother worked at a clinic where a bunch of polio kids were, and asked the kids with polio whether they would prefer not to have been born, or um, if, if they could go directly to one. heaven. What's that? I think I, I think I was listening to that show. I listened. Like I, when I was listening on tune in, I listened back to like the last week stuff. Like I just go back to the archive. Mm -hmm. That's that's a uh, yep. The, so I these kids with up, polio so. said that they would rather live on planet Earth with polio than have gone to heaven. Well, thanks yeah. for your call tonight, thanks man. I appreciate it. I appreciate Absolutely. the call. You mind if I get a shout out real quick? No shout outs on Free Talk Live, but thank you for it. Eight fifty five four fifty free. That's eight five five four five zero three seven three three. Otherwise, it descends into uh, high school kids calling in and saying, I want to say thanks to... Thanks there, Nicole. I hope you're listening. 855-450-FREE. And Skype us. You can Skype in at username lrn.fm. Whether you want to talk about atheists uh, being hated or you know, maybe you are an atheist and you've experienced some of that frustration and the difficulty of kind of coming out of the closet... Uh, as an atheist, or you can talk about the ISIS situation or whatever you want. Let's go to uh, Jackson in California. You're on Free Talk Live, Jackson. Hey, how's it going? Hey, good, Jackson. Go ahead with your thoughts. Uh, I want to talk about the plastic bag ban, the impending plastic bag ban in California. Is that statewide? Uh, yes, it will be statewide. Don't you already have it in I, a few I, cities there? Yes, that's true. There's a few cities in the community that banned all plastic bags. And uh -huh. if, when this when this ban goes into effect, it will be, I believe, July 2015, and I just think it's a terrible idea. Why? Because it won't stop the litter. I mean, there's still going to be litter. Mm -hmm. There just will be litter with the addition of the illegality of plastic bags. Meaning that uh, somebody is going to well, first of all, the, the the storefronts are going to get rid of them, right? So the, the yeah. grocers are going to be changing into, I presume, paper bags, or are they going to be mandating everybody have those sewn bags? I don't, I don't really know. There's really a lot of speculation about it, hmm. and some people are going to bring their own bags, but you know, that could be difficult because what, you might end up buying more groceries than your bags can hold. You know, That's I, true. I've thought about this, and I, you know, I would like to say that I'm always the good little consumer and bring in my. Um, uh, you have some bags, bags, don't you? I do, and I take them in because I don't like to have all those plastic bags. I love them, man. They're great for picking up poop. They are good for dog poop. Yep. Uh, they are good for trash can I, lining. Uh, trash can line the little the little trash cans, mm -hmm. and they're good for in my you know when it comes to I have pigs and I have to take you know bread bags and things like that, and I shove them in the bag, tie them up, and send them to the dump, but I can buy more bags of groceries than I can use um, these things for, so I don't need them as much, but I wonder, could you, what about the grocery store? If it if it says Publix on it, could you charge Publix for the bag that uh, is out there? Could you find them for mm. the litter? Well, I, they, I bet you they might. We can look in and find out more about the story here in moments. It's Free Talk Live. Are you searching for your soulmate? Someone you can trust, who will never betray you, or... Cooperate with the NSA? Stop searching. With EasyDNS, you found a keeper. EasyDNS does it all. Domain names, web hosting, and managed WordPress hosting. EasyDNS stands up for your internet freedom. And with servers in Canada, they do not cooperate with the NSA. Go to EasyDNS.com. You'll love their services or get a full refund. They guarantee it. And they accept Bitcoin. That's EasyDNS.com. Kay Oliver is part of the Tweyambe Women's Group in Jinja, Uganda. She gets old clothes, fixes them up, washes them, and then sells them at the Jinja market. She was quite happy with her success at her business, but realized that a sewing machine would really help her make more money to take care of her two kids. Free Talk Live helped her get that sewing machine. You can help us help more people by getting your coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com. Make a difference, one cup at a time. Get a free pound, try out the subscription, cancel at any time, coffee.freetalklive.com. 
I love my magic mud. I drink a lot of coffee. I had stains on my teeth. Then I found my magic mud, and I was told it would remove stains. So I paid attention when I brushed the first time. My magic mud is black tooth powder, and the difference it made in my teeth in one application was noticeable. With four, my teeth were as white as you normal folks out there. Please go to mymagicmud.com and buy a jar. There's 150 applications for 25 bucks. You can use Bitcoin, mymagicmud.com. You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone, 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number two is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. From Keenan in the Shire, the Liberty Media Capital of the World, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Saturday, September 13th, 2014. Silver is trading at $18.64 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,229 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $481. The Telegraph reports, the mother of murdered journalist James Foley has said he was let down by the U.S. government and that she was embarrassed and appalled at the way the family was treated. Diane Foley told CNN that they were treated as an annoyance and at one stage even threatened with arrest if they attempted to raise a ransom to try to secure his release. The 40-year-old journalist was beheaded, apparently by an ISIS fanatic with a British accent, and a video of his murder was released by the group last month. In the months leading up to his death, the Foley family was contacted by ISIS with large ransom demands which they were unable to meet. Like the UK, but unlike much of Europe, the US has a policy of refusing to pay hostage takers. Foley told CNN that members of her family were warned that paying a ransom was illegal and that they might be prosecuted. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Roberts and Roberts Brokerage. For over 35 years, Roberts and Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment grade precious metals. They now take Bitcoin for purchasing precious metals so you can turn your profits into a long-term investment. Call Roberts and Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing. 800-874-9760. Reuters reports a U.S. Court of Appeals in Chicago said on Friday that Wisconsin can implement its 2012 law requiring voters to present photo ID at the ballot box, allowing the state to put the new rules into effect at the general election in November. The rush order from the 7th U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals, which heard arguments for and against the law earlier on Friday, is temporary while the court works on its definitive ruling on the issue. At the hearing on Friday, Wisconsin had asked a a three-judge panel, all of them appointed by Republican administrations, to urgently lift a lower court's injunction against the voter ID law. Similar voter ID rules have become a political and racial flashpoint across the United States. A federal district court in Wisconsin ruled in April that the law was unconstitutional, even though it was upheld in a separate ruling by the state's Supreme Court. Wisconsin's Attorney General appealed the district court ruling to the Seventh Circuit Court. The ACLU and other groups have challenged the law, saying that it discriminates against the poor and minorities who are less likely to have photo IDs or the underlying documents needed to obtain IDs. In the spirit of Motorhome Diaries and Liberty on Tour, I intend to take the message of peace, love, and liberty on the road. During the 104-day trip, I'll be visiting at least 10 cities across the country, speaking to people about the ideas of peace, love, and liberty. To find out more about the tour or to donate, visit tour.fppradio.com. That's T-O-U-R dot F-P-P radio dot com. 
The Associated Press reports a ballot initiative that would have asked voters to split California into six separate states failed to qualify for the ballot in 2016, according to the Secretary of State's office on Friday. Silicon Valley venture capitalist Tim Draper submitted 1.37 million signatures in July in support of the measure, saying that the state with 38.3 million people has become ungovernable because it has too many diverse interests for politicians to effectively represent their constituents. A random sampling of ballot initiative signatures from all 58 counties found that just 66% were projected to be valid and that it would fall more than 500,000 signatures short of the number needed to make the ballot. Draper sought to split California into six states called Jefferson, North California, Silicon Valley, Central California, West California, and South California. Draper, who has so far put more than $5 million into the effort, said in a statement on Friday that he believed enough signatures were valid and that a full review would prove that. He said, six Californias will conduct a review of the signatures determined to be invalid. The internal verification process conducted by our signature gathering firm predicted a much higher validity rate than the random sample result. Draper's effort is not linked to a separate movement that would allow some northern counties to split from California to form a new state of Jefferson. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. It's the Onion Radio News. A new crispy snack cracker will ease the crushing pain of modern life. The dull, all-consuming ache of present-day existence will be slightly alleviated when Nabisco's breakthrough T.C. McCrispy's line of crackers arrives today. Available in regular Garden Ranch and Zesty Cheddar, the new crackers will flood consumers' bodies with fat, salt, and starch to produce a pleasing sensation of warmth and nourishment, momentarily freeing them from a relentless, crushing sense of profound grief. Mel Krychek is Nabisco's Director of Corporate Communications. Our tasty new snack cracker will, if only for a few lovely moments, significantly lessen the hideously bleak and empty torment of modern life that festers in every solitary soul. Nabisco expects most despair-riddled consumers to eat an entire box in one sitting. Doyle Redland for The Onion Radio News, online at theonion.com. You know, what I love the most about doing Free Talk Live is that our listeners bring us some of the best show prep, and sometimes it happens live on the air. Like, I didn't know about California's legislature passing a total ban on grocery stores, or I guess any stores, uh, offering plastic bags to customers. So it hasn't yet passed the governor's office yet, uh, but... Well, it probably will. It's, it's California. Governor Jerry Brown. <laughs> it's California. It doesn't matter what his name is. It's California. What are the odds it's not going to pass? Um, well, we can talk more about that here. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Maybe you're just tuning in. If you're not just tuning in, if you've been listening, you know we've also been talking about ISIS, the beheadings, and how poorly the, the family of James Foley, the first man who was allegedly beheaded uh, over in the Middle East recently by ISIS, uh, how poorly his family was treated by federal agents who actually threatened them if they were to raise money uh, to try to pay some ransom for their son to get him back alive. So we've got all those discussions on the table. Actually, we also had a guy calling about Amer- being uh, an atheist in America and how difficult that can be. So you can share your thoughts toll-free at 855-450-FREE. We're going to go back to your calls and thoughts. We did have Jackson on the line in California, and he had brought this story about the California plastic bag ban. According to a story over at Reuters, uh, just written about a week or two ago, this, uh, let's see, they have, there's never been a state that's done this. There have been some counties, some cities, Hawaii's Maui County, some other cities around that have, uh, that have made it illegal for grocery stores to pack purchases in plastic. Uh, at the state level, however, opposition from plastic bag makers has usually prevailed. California Senate voted 22 to 15 for the bill, and it must be signed into law by September 30th by the Democratic Governor Jerry Brown. Uh, state Senator Alex Padilla or Padilla says, 
quote, single-use plastic bags not only litter our beaches, but also our mountains, our deserts, and our rivers, streams, and lakes. Jackson, in California there, what are you hearing from people about this? Are, is this even an issue that's being discussed? And tell me more. Uh, nobody I know is talking about it. Interesting. My, I've, talked to, I've talked about that to my wife, and she's all for it. Huh. Um, one, one thing I'm curious, though, will a black market emerge of plastic bags? since they will be illegal. Well, I can't imagine that... Well, first of all, it's not saying that plastic bags will be illegal. You, in theory, would be able to bring your own plastic bag into the store and put stuff okay. in the plastic bag and what take it out. What it'll do is it'll drive down uh, prices of biodegra acceptable biodegradable bags because uh, people will forget their bags, like I do sometimes. Mm -hmm. I forget them out in my... I forget my fabric bags out in my plug-in Prius. Yeah. Um, and uh, I... You know, the, I don't want to. I I refuse to walk back out and get my bags and then come back in. I just I won't do it. So I, I need some kind of alternative, and they'll probably come up with some really cheap alternative. You know, a five cent fabric bag, and that's what's going to happen. And you'll see those on the ground. Now there is something I'd like to know because the story here says the measure would ban grocery stores from handing out single use grocery bags with customers' purchases. Does that mean that? Walmart will be banned from using plastic bags? Is Walmart a grocery store? Some Walmarts have larger grocer sections than others. A super Walmart, for instance, has a large grocer section. A regular Walmart uh, doesn't have as large of a grocery section. Is there a certain percentage of floor space that uh, one must have as grocery to be considered a grocery store? What about 7-Eleven? What about convenience stores? What about, uh, you know, stores that don't necessarily have fresh produce, although sometimes you can walk into the 7-Eleven and they have some bananas or, you know, oranges and things like that. So, you know, at what level is something a grocery store? Is it, is it square footage? Is it the type of inventory that, that they store? So it sounds like this isn't going to affect, let's say, a hardware store. You go to the hardware store, they give you a plastic bag there. Home Depot does them. Right, sure. Home Depot, they give, you, they give you plastic bags at almost every major big box retailer out there, and as well as mom and pop businesses. When I go down to get Chinese food here in Keene, I get that in a plastic bag the as ones, well. The, the white ones that say thank you all the way down the side. Uh, there's usually a smiley face on the ones that I get. <laughs> but uh, Jackson, uh, any other final comments on this? Uh, those are very good points. Um, I'm going to research those myself. That's it. Thanks for the call tonight. I appreciate hearing from you. Yeah, I was actually digging around during the news break trying to find what the actual bill number is of this thing, and none of the articles I was able to pull up knew what the bill number was or communicated that information. So wasn't able to actually pull up the actual uh, text of the bill. Not that I really want to read through it, but I was just curious as to whether it was just grocery stores. The news media summary here from Reuters makes it sound like it is. And uh, so if that's if that's the case, I guess the argument would be that, well, grocers put more plastic bags out there than anyone else. You know, as far as like consumable products, it's more likely that you're going to be going in and buying groceries more often than, say, Craftsman Tools at Sears or something like that. I suppose that could be the argument. Or maybe this is just the foot in the door. Maybe they're going to be, uh, you know, banning plastic bags from grocery stores. And then next year, they'll go ahead and expand that out to all uh, stores. So what do you think about this concept? And I'm, I'm just, I'm floating it you out the there. the listener? I haven't had a chance to think uh, about, well, I, I would love to hear what the listener mm -hmm. has to say about Toll -free this. Toll-free numbers, 855 450 free. But I'm asking you, Ian. So let's say that you ban you, – you, you don't ban plastic bags, but you tell grocers that, look, you know your bags are ending up polluting the you know our waterways, uh, you know our oceans, our mountains. What did he list off there? He listed a bunch Everything of things. Everything that's natural. They're, they're everywhere. Your bags, they're everywhere. Um, they've got their name on them. What happens if you find the store – for the bags That's being a terrible the idea. And I'm asking you because essentially this would be a ban, but it would be a ban in a different way. Because, I mean, when you acknowledge that somebody is going to throw these things on the ground, then, eh, you know, it's a different thing. You That's know they're going to, idea. right? It takes the responsibility away from the person who did the littering. It shouldn't be the company's fault that one of their customers is irresponsible. And not only that, then someone who didn't like a certain company could just go get a bunch of their uh, plastic bags and throw them, you know, throw them around a police department. That's a good point that <laughs> they can certainly like do that. that. So, no, you don't want to take responsibility out of the person's hands who's the actual criminal. And litter is a crime. It's a property rights uh, violation. But let's continue. Uh, we've got Coral on the line in Atlantic City listening to WPG. Hello, Coral. Always listening to you. Welcome. Well, 
they, they got it. They got it banned in plastic bags to save the plastic trees. Think about it. Remember, <laughs> they came out with plastic bags to save the trees. They got rid of the paper bags. Yeah, it's true. Oh wow! No, I don't remember that. That's fascinating. I was probably before my time. When was that? Well, I, yeah, I could. I don't remember exactly when it was. You see, in, in Atlantic County, my uh, senator he wanted. A five cent tax on every plastic bag that you get at any of the stores if you didn't bring them other bags in, right? Yep. And he wanted four cents of that money to go to the state of New Jersey. So it was, you know, in my opinion, it had nothing to do with the plastic bags. It was a, another way to get four cents out of the taxpayers for each bag. And he couldn't believe the outcry from the public against it and it went nowhere. Yeah, I don't think people want this. Uh, you know, they they no. like their plastic bags, but I do agree with you. I remember it might have been around high school or maybe for me junior high um, that uh, okay. they they switched from paper bags to plastic bags, and there was you know it get, forcing people to change to anything doesn't generally go well. Just look at how the the metric system uh-huh. was accepted in the U.S. I wonder about that, Mark. Yeah. I wonder about uh, whether people want this or not, because a lot of people want to feel like that they are doing something for the environment. And that makes them feel good. Um, and if they're told that, well, if we ban plastic bags, that'll be good for the environment, which, of course, it's interesting that you're pointing out that that was the original reason to bring out the plastic bag in the first place. Uh, that may be persuasive to people who, while they know that there is convenience involved in the plastic bags, may be willing to tell themselves, well, I'm willing to go through a little bit of difficulty in order to help save the planet. And so, therefore, this may have support. I'm interested to see if there's been any actual polling data done and uh, would like to find that out about this issue. Coral, any final thoughts? Go ahead. Yeah, the last thing is when I take them woven plastic bags and heavy runs to my supermarket, they give me five cents off my grocery bill for each one I use. Sweet. Whoopee. Hey, thanks, Coral. Appreciate the call. <laughs> Toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. We'd love to have your thoughts. You know what? I like that he brought up the, the paper bag aspect of this. And I remember when I was growing up, and I was, I was growing up in the 80s and 90s, uh, I remember seeing you know, my parents would bring home groceries in the, the brown paper bags at Publix in South Florida. And then at some point, those seemed to go away. Like, they still had them, but they'd always, then they'd start asking people uh, paper or plastic. And it seemed like most people were choosing plastic when they were given that choice. So maybe people do want this. What about you? 855-450-FREE is the toll-free number here. You can share your thoughts. This is Free Talk Live. I want to share something important that will not only improve your life, but the lives of many others as well. And all you need to do is drink coffee. I'm not talking about harmful store-bought or chain coffee. No, this is truly the best of the best coffee. We've partnered with Kamano Island Coffee Roasters to offer BuzzBox. With every purchase, 10% goes towards our efforts to give the gift of human freedom by providing at least 100 microfinance loans via World Vision. So literally, just one cup at a time, you're having an impact in helping make a difference in the world and one sip will have you buzzing to family and friends to prove just how good it is we're giving a free pound of coffee to everyone in the audience all you do is cover shipping go to coffee.freetalklive.com buzzbox coffee is organic so it contains no pesticides or toxins it's shade grown so less acidity and no heartburn it's top 1% Arabica grade and gives people the opportunity to own their own coffee farms. Join us in making a huge impact at coffee.freetalklive.com. Making the right decisions is a challenge to investors. Are we going to see economic growth slide into a recession or at worst depression? Hi, Ted Anderson from Midas Resources. We all know when a company acts irresponsibly, divesting ourselves in a move towards safety is prudent. When the market becomes volatile, U.S. Treasuries are a safe haven. But what do you do when the U.S. government over extends itself and spends beyond its means. Many investors are turning toward gold as a common sense alternative to traditional paper investments. Midas Resources has put together a powerful book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, discussing costs, benefits, risks, featuring full color illustrations, weights, and measures. The book is free and can be yours by calling 800-686-2237. Paper investments are dwarfed by gold's 6,000 year history. Discover how gold may be right for you and your IRA by calling 800-686-2237. Whether buying or it's time for you to sell, the book is free. Call 800-686-2237. Free Talk Live. They're the mafia. They function like the mafia. They think like the mafia. They hire people who think like the mafia. 
The only difference is they put on a front that there's something legitimate and legal and valid about all of it. Well, there's no Don um, in this particular mafia. The Don is uh, the the majority of people who went out and voted and then put you know their their new Don in place. And the, sometimes the Dons change and sometimes they don't. Incumbents are very difficult to unseat. And and you know they're, they're, but their henchmen stay in place the whole time. It, it, it's 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 quite a sophisticated mob operation. It is. Well, that they it's the have. mafia that is so successful and that has so brilliantly pulled the wool over people's eyes that they've actually gotten people to give them their children so the mafia can educate them into believing that they need the mafia. Right. We have free indoctrination camps. I mean, school (laughs) for you to send your kids to. Free Talk Live, seven nights a week from 7 to 10 Eastern, live on the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. Did you know that you can listen to and watch Free Talk Live during our live show seven days a week from 7 to 10 p.m. Eastern via our studio cam at cam.freetalklive.com? Not only that, but you can also chat with other listeners at the same time. Do I need to mention that both the studio cam and chat room are totally free? Outside of Free Talk Live's live hours, you won't see a cam feed, but we'll hear audio from the Liberty Radio Network. So listen, watch, and chat all free at cam.freetalklive.com. That's cam.freetalklive.com. Do you drink coffee? Was the last cup of coffee you had really good? Free Talk Live has teamed up with BuzzBox to bring you the best of the best coffee. Shade grown, organic, top 1% grade Arabica. But what's different is for every 10 people that get their coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com, we can give another micro loan through Kiva. Get a free pound to try it out. A free pound of the best of the best coffee. Help others one cup at a time. Coffee.freetalklive.com. What's up next? Visit the Liberty Radio Network program guide to find out at shows.lrn.fm. That's shows.lrn.fm. It's Free Talk Live. Live Saturday edition of the program here to take your calls about whatever's on your mind. 855 450 free. Coming up, an update on the plastic bag ban. We were just talking about it a moment ago. It's a proposal by the uh, the Senate there in California. The legis- legislature has passed this uh, plastic bag ban, is now going to the governor's desk, and he has spoken about it. We'll tell you what he had to say here in just a few moments. Also, you can join us online by going to freetalklive.com and enjoying the features there. If you like Free Talk Live, throw some Bitcoin in our tip jar. Go to bitcoin.freetalklive.com. You can find the tip jar there as well as some kind of introductory information about Bitcoin and how to get started. First thing you need to know is that you need, if you want to get Bitcoin, which is amazing decentralized currency, not issued by any bank or any government, it actually puts the power of money in the hands of you and I, which is a huge deal. And it's hard to really overstate how important that is. When you cut out the middleman, uh, the middlemen of money, you get money that you can send anywhere in the world for next to nothing. It's pretty amazing stuff, and in an instant as well. So go to uh, blockchain.com. You can get your free Bitcoin wallet there. And when you're all set up with your Bitcoin wallet, head over to expresscoin.com to load it up with Bitcoin. You can actually get Bitcoin with no exchange fee through expresscoin.com by using our code FTL. That's if you're ordering less than $40 worth of Bitcoin, use code FTL at expresscoin.com to get it for 0%. Uh, and if you go over 40 bucks, it's only 3% fee, and that's uh, still a heck of a deal. It's probably the best you're going to find out there on the entire internet. So check out expresscoin.com. Plus, they let you get the other alternative currencies to Bitcoin, like Dogecoin, Litecoin, Blackcoin, and Darkcoin. It's all now available in Canada and the United States. Expresscoin.com. Let's go to John. He's in Myrtle Beach listening to WRNN. Hello, John. You're on Free Talk Live. Hey, uh, yeah. I'm not here to argue with you. I'm looking for a solution. All right. I like solutions. Let's do it. Okay. Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. Every year, the Memorial Day weekend, we have a problem with bikers, pedestrians, and car riders coming down for that weekend to party. It's about equal to what Atlanta used to have. It's pretty neat. And we had four murders here past Memorial Day weekend. Yikes. The solution for Horry County is to make them go through a 40-mile loop, which should go down the boulevard. Merle Beach is kind of like Atlantic Beach, New Jersey, or whatever. And they go around on the interstate, come back around. the 40-mile loop. Now, it's a cost of a million dollars extra. For police personnel and the closing off highway, which to me is like kicking hand beds, not going to work. So I'm asking y'all to, which I agree with majority of the time, even though we have our disagreements. I love power through force, 
even though I'm libertarian thinking, that there has to be some kind of situation which you have a thought, one half fear, one one half respect for law. But what would be your solution? We have Memorial Day weekend that used to be dedicated to the military, and now it's turned to freak me. So just to be clear, yeah. I just want to understand what you've said. The 40-mile thing I didn't really understand. You're saying that there's a bunch of partiers, many bikers, are coming into the Myrtle Beach area on Memorial Day weekend and raising havoc and partying and causing problems, violence, uh, destruction perhaps of property. Is that what you're saying? Yes, sir. Okay, and you're asking I'm, what I'm, to— I'm, I'm what saying to, it, and this is a huge issue in the state of South Carolina. Because you're asking involved, what to do about that in the absence of having I'm a at, government uh, police force, or just are you just asking in general? Or just what steps that, that? that can be taken from, from like, immediately? No, I'm asking what y'all two think, because I respect what you think. I really do, even though I disagree with you here lately, because I see the way this country is going. But yeah, I would it's say that— kind of a situation where it's, this Memorial Day weekend is going to be pretty much martial law. They're bringing in towers. They're bringing in yeah, I don't police. support martial law. That's scary stuff. And I think that okay. we need to get away from the mil- militaristic police state. Now, I don't think there's anything wrong with people hiring private security. If there's something going on and you feel like your storefront needs to be protected, then you should team up, especially if you're in like a strip mall or something like that. There are other businesses nearby. Team up with your, you know, your businesses next door and raise some money to hire some private guards to uh, be out there, or just do it yourself, you know, like uh, like the Korean guys did during the Rodney King with the machine guns, you know, outside their stores. So uh, I, I, I actually love your answer. That's actually what they're telling them to do. Just the government here in the state of South Carolina. Of telling course, they're them telling them that. You know, the reason why is because the government's saying we can't be held responsible for not protecting your business. So look, business owners. Uh, even though you're forced to pay for our so-called protection services, we're admitting to you that we're not going to be there when you call us. Because on a busy time like that, especially with a lot of people in, in town, it's going to be hard to get through on 911. Uh, and so you've got to take care of yourselves. That's what they're admitting to. Like, they can't handle this, and they need people to to, uh, to handle it themselves. Yeah, well, it's a, it's a real big issue, and you will find it coming to the forefront of the national media come next Memorial Day, I guarantee it that it will make media news. John, I appreciate you bringing that to the table tonight, and I thank you for the call. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. But yeah, I think that we've seen, as we've discussed many times on Free Talk Live over many years, the continual militarization of the police. And I think that's that actually causes problems. If you actually had police on the ground or private security or whoever, even you know, again, I'm fine with government police so long as they're not actually enforcing laws with no victim. So if you had the police on the ground during these parties, we've got Pumpkin Fest here in Keene, New Hampshire. It's kind of similar. Uh, there's a big party that goes on. There's thousands of people, uh, tens of thousands of people that actually come into this little city. The Keene, New Hampshire, barely qualifies as a city. It's 25,000 people living here. Right, and, and I wouldn't say that that's a huge party by uh, Myrtle Beach's standards. By Keene standards, though. But by Keene standards, Pumpkin, it's probably pretty similar. Pumpkin Fest is huge. There are literally something like sixty to 70,000 people in the city for Pumpkin Fest, and that includes a lot of young the people. population triples. Yeah, there's a lot of young people, and uh, there's a lot of, you know, it's a college town, so college students from all across New Hampshire come to Keene, and they all party, and there's sometimes some violence. You know, if you get enough people with enough alcohol in them, somebody's going to fight at some point. There's going to be something that happens, or someone will hurt themselves. So obviously the police are busy dealing with, and they should be busy dealing with stopping fights, that I support. Uh, you know, stopping and investigating people who've harmed others. And that's cool. I, I'm, I'm, I'm okay with that. But if the police are walking around harassing people for open container violations and the police are harassing people for openly smoking cannabis and doing things that don't actually have a victim, that creates a division between the police and average people. Because average people, most of them, want to get high, or they want to imbibe alcohol, or they want to somehow alter their state of consciousness. And when the police are arresting their friends, and or them, or you, for doing those things, that creates animosity between people and the police. It makes it more likely that poli- that people will act out when they see the police, especially if they're drunk and angry about the police and what the police had done perhaps to one of their friends earlier in the day. Uh, so if we actually had a, a peace squad, officers who were actually dedicated to restoring peace rather than enforcing stupid laws 
then maybe they would actually be respected more so by the people that are actually in the streets. And secondly, if you remove the militarization from the police as well, that will also help. So instead of the police rolling down the street in the bear cat, uh, pointing guns at people, you would have more of a friendly officer who's not wearing all black, black sunglasses, trying to disconnect him from all the people around him. You'd have friendly officers who could make eye contact with people directly, walking around and enjoying the day and talking with folks. That, I think, would be much better, and I think you'd see people People behaving better in, in, in general. Your thoughts are welcome, though. Share them here at 855 450 free. That's the toll free number. It's brought to you by Pro XPN 855 450 3733. Am I onto something there, or is the answer to just crack down like is what they're doing? You know, bring more cops in, have more weapons, more towers, more trucks. I love my magic mud. I drink a lot of coffee. I had stains on my teeth. Then I found my magic mud, and I was told it would remove stains. So I paid attention when I brushed the first time. My magic mud is black tooth powder, and the difference it made in my teeth in one application was noticeable. With four, my teeth were as white as you normal folks out there. Please go to mymagicmud.com and buy a jar. There's 150 applications for 25 bucks. You can use Bitcoin, mymagicmud.com. Are you ready to surrender your right to buy body armor? No joke. Congress is now trying to outlaw civilian body armor. And if House Bill H.R. 5344 becomes law, you can kiss your right to protect yourself against rifle bullets goodbye. Don't put off your body armor purchase any longer. Go now to InfidelBodyArmor.com. Thousands of military veterans trust their lives to Infidel Body Armor. You should too. Spelled I-N-F-I-D-E-L. Infidel Body Armor. Just won't quit. Attention, have you been in a serious automobile accident? Then you need to call our attorneys now. We specialize in helping our clients get compensated for major auto injuries. If you've been in any type of car or motorcycle accident and you've been seriously injured, you may be entitled to significant financial compensation. Our attorneys have recovered millions and millions of dollars for injured clients. There are no out-of-pocket costs to you ever. We only receive a fee when we win your case. We are available 24-7. If you've been in an accident and been seriously injured, make this free call to our attorneys attorneys now. Call the Personal Injury Center at 800-648-9173. 800-648-9173. 800-648-9173. That's 800-648-9173. This ad is paid for by participating member law firms. We are not an attorney referral service. Representation may not be did you know that Free Aid is a mutual aid, educational, and networking organization? At Free Aid, we support volunteers who provide first aid. We do outreach to the public about health and safety, and we bring together medically skilled freedom lovers. Free Aid is made possible by your generous support. Donors can receive great gifts like first aid kits, t shirts, silver dime cards, and hoodies. The Free Aid Silver Dime Card Project is sponsored in part by Roberts and Roberts Burkridge, Freedoms Phoenix, and Don't Tread on Meme. Visit fr33aid.com. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. You likely buy all kinds of things online. Amazon is the largest online retailer. You can get what you need at the same prices with free super saver shipping by going to shop.freetalklive.com. Please do your online shopping at shop.freetalklive.com. Free Press Publications is an independent alternative media and publishing company founded in June 2009 with the mission of ensuring a free press for the freedom movement and is committed to spreading the message of peace, freedom, love, and liberty. FPP also gives new authors an avenue for publishing freedom-oriented material. FPP brings you daily news and commentary at fpp.cc as well as weekly news in the FPP Free Minute and Peace, Love, Liberty Radio at fppradio.com. The monthly newspaper FPP News at news.fpp.cc and books at shop.fpp.cc. Find FPP online at fpp.cc. That's fpp.cc, as in Creative Commons.
If you enjoy LRN.FM, please contribute to your favorite shows via their websites and become an amplifier at amp.lrn.fm. That's amp.lrn.fm. It's Free Talk Live. Take control toll free here. Live Saturday edition of the program. Ian with you. And Mark. Join us online at freetalklive.com. Join us in real life at Disney World. That's right. We're going to Disney World, and it's not too long now. It's October the 4th. Three weeks, maybe. 5th and 6th will be there for coinsinthekingdom.com. It's a Bitcoin party, where there's going to be lots of speakers uh, in the Bitcoin community, the Cryptocurrency College Network, the Chamber of Digital Commerce, Liberty.me. Uh, Bitcoin pioneer Charlie Shrim will be there, or at least uh, his little robot. I'm not entirely sure. He was he was out on bond, but he's come to some kind of uh, conclusion with the the government. I'm mm-hmm. not exactly sure how that went. Plea deal. Yeah. Yep, yep. Mycelium. Uh, that's one of the uh, big wallet man- uh, account uh, manufacturers there of uh, Bitcoin. It's at the Wyndham Lake Buena Vista in downtown Disney, Saturday, the October the 4th through Monday, October 6th. They will be going to Disney World, but the events um, on Saturday and Sunday. Tickets are only 60 bucks. Hotel, 100 Kids under 12 are free. Fun is mandatory. Come to the Magic Kingdom to celebrate magic internet money. Coinsinthekingdom.com. So we've got more on the plastic bag ban as well. Still coming up. Your calls are welcome. 855-450 free. Let's go to the phones and the fun. We'll talk first to David listening in Columbia, South Carolina to WQXL. Hello, David. How you doing? How you doing today? Welcome. You're on the air. Great. Okay. I, I wanted to add some more details uh, regarding the bike week situation. Uh, I don't think I missed it, but uh, this bike week is uh, commonly referred to as a black bike week, and it seems as if our governor wants to ban it. However, it is my understanding that the local government, the local municipalities, do not want to ban it because of the uh, revenue that it generates. Sure. It's, good, it's, for, it's good for business. Yeah, I would think that uh, yes. one thing that about this, as I was going to say, is essentially, you know, these bars are offloading their responsibility as far as security goes to the municipality. If you liquor somebody up and then r- run them off into the streets, um, you know, at the end of the, the evening or whatever, like they're to some extent, I mean, you'd have made all the revenue from them, but you're not responsible in any way for whatever it is that they might do in that condition. Yeah, that too. And my my concern is that uh, that in any large gathering where there's alcohol and so forth and so on involved, there are uh, issues, but it seems as if our governor and some of our uh, fellow citizens are less tolerant when it comes from the African-American community. Yeah, that wouldn't surprise me at all, David. Thank you for the call tonight. I appreciate hearing from you. The toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. Let's go to Bruce. Black White Bike Week. Haven't heard of it. Bruce, you're in free talk, uh, You're on Free Talk Live, and you're in Lynchburg listening to WLNI-FM. Hey, how are you guys doing, Good, man? Bruce. I heard you, heard you talking about the, the plastic bags and, and the, the state of Mal- the county of Maui was brought up, and they had to, well, they didn't have to, but they were having such a catastrophic problem with plastic bags that they outlawed them. They, the trade winds over there were heavy at, on days, and the dump, the road to the dump was going up the Haleakala Mountain, and all these bags would get uh, dumped into the dump, and the road going up to the dump was lined with coyote trees, mesquite, and they had all these thorns and stuff on them, and the winds would blow the plastic bags out of the dump, and they all got hung up in these coyote trees, and oh, it wow. looked like Christmas trees. Imagine Christmas trees adorned with plastic. Gar- garbage bag wow. trees. They, they just grow in garbage bags. Yeah, and they, they really hated it, so they, they outlawed them. And somehow they, they cleaned them up, they, they yanked them all out of the trees, and it was all pretty again. Yeah, I can see why um, you wouldn't want, you know, you wouldn't want to go out there and pull the bags off the trees every single day. I mean, because there's just more going to blow in. Mm-hmm. I think that this is a real issue uh, that, uh, you know, this, this illustrates many of the problems of... Uh, 
you know, the living together. You know, I prefer to have these plastic bags over having, say, um, you know, paper bags, and I want some plastic bags in my life. I don't want every sure. one of them that I get, but at the same time, I understand that there's this giant spot in the Pacific that's full of plastic that's just floating there um, that, you know, so far we haven't figured out what to do with that. So I think that it's a, you know, this is a tough one. Bruce, thanks for bringing that up. I appreciate hearing from you. Toll-free number is 855-450-FREE. It may be a tough one, but... I just don't support using the coercion of the state to solve problems like this. I mean, if if people think this is a problem, and I think people would think that's a problem, if people were aware of the fact that plastic bags are lining the trees in a certain location, they may be motivated to attempt to talk to the companies and try to uh, convince them to change how they do business. That's not unheard of for companies to, in fact, it's what companies do. If they feel like there's a wind of change going on in the marketplace, like, for instance, you got all these companies now advertising how green they are because they feel like people, that's what they want. People, customers want green, guys. Look, we gotta, we've got to change our marketing. We've got to change how we approach things. We've got to even change, in, in Walmart's case, they're changing their truck line out to be uh, to be more green, as I understand sure. it. So, uh, so there, a lot of them are kind of top-down organizational-level changes to really help market their program to market their business to consumers and if they feel like they can they can be the hero of the day like wow you know we saw this problem that these were our bags and they're all over these trees and we've changed how we're going to behave i think that using persuasion using the marketplace these are ways that we should find solutions to problems, not using the threat of violence through the state, which is what all laws are ultimately. I think that the uh, the threat of violence through the state would be a fine solution if it wasn't abused 99 times out of 100. That the problem with using uh, you know this organization that claims for itself a monopoly privilege on violence in a given geographic area, and that's what the state is, is, is that if they used it judiciously— use this power judiciously, you wouldn't have people like us ever having had the uh, the social capital to ever get on the radio in the first place. Mm -hmm. So they, uh, you know, people that claim for themselves the power to rule over you have abused that power historically to such a large extent that... Uh, I, I don't give I don't trust them in an area here where I would actually sort of support it. Let's go to well I don't support using violence. I don't think it's okay. It's just an, it, for me it's a moral question. Uh, let's go to Pat listening in Norfolk to WNIS. Hello Pat. You're on Free Talk Live. Hey, how are you guys doing tonight? Good. You're on with Ian and Mark. Go ahead, Pat. Uh, well, look, uh, I was just watching the news the other day and I I was uh, trying to figure out about that. Uh, Kid that uh, went to the school and and shot them kids up there in where was it Ohio, and then he escaped from uh, some prison with two other guys. Oh yeah, that kid. I heard something about yeah. that. I heard that. I heard about that on some radio news the last couple of days. Yeah, I didn't look too deeply into the thing because there's really you know I, there's no issues surrounding murder. Most people are against it. Well, yeah, I mean, I think it's terrible that a that a killer is out on the loose. Uh, but I always, but I think I'm, they, they I'm always fascinated him. by a prison escape, and I, I I'd like to know how he did it. I think hey, they got him. You guys, re you guys recall I made a call uh, a couple months ago, and I was talking about that crash that a uh, uh, MH53 Sea Dragon. They finally. Uh, Finally found out what what caused it and all that stuff. It's what was that? An MH fifty three C? What is that? A helicopter or something? Yeah, it was a helicopter that was stationed here in Norfolk, and it crashed off of like Virginia Beach or something like that. You know, like eighteen miles out or something like that. Okay. I can't I can't remember the whole details on it, but they finally revealed everything. You know, through the Navy. I don't remember uh, that at all. I don't remember that call, but I yeah, it's not. So, but, what was the question on the uh, the dude um, that escaped? There, there was no question. Uh, My question was, how did he escape? Thank you for the call tonight, yeah, Pat. I appreciate. Yeah, yeah. I appreciate it. Eight fifty five four fifty free. That's the toll free number here. Uh, and it looks like according to LimaOhio.com, all three have been caught. Yeah, that's what I, I kept saying. Well, you said you thought they'd been caught. Okay, thanks. So I've confirmed they have been caught. Uh, the toll-free number is 855-450-FREE, and you can take control here. You can also get on Skype with us. Our Skype username is lrn.fm. There's more Free Talk Live on the way. At 
The Home Depot, buy one or more pallets of GAF Royal Sovereign three-tab shingles and save up to 20%. Let's raise the roof but lower the cost with bulk pricing on GAF, America's number one shingle, featuring advanced protection technology. This is worth shouting from the rooftops. Let's do this. Up to 20% off one or more pallets of select GAF shingles. More saving. More doing. That's the power of the Home Depot. Valid through September 17th. U.S. only. See store for details. Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. On Facebook, on the news, and in conversations with friends, we're bombarded every day with advice on how to be healthier, from gluten-free and non-GMO diets to how much exercise and sleep the body needs. But how much have you heard about alkalizing the body? AlkaVision Plasma pH Drops are a holistic and natural way to get your body's pH levels back in balance. Just a few drops in water will help your body rid itself of harmful waste. And even the healthiest of diets can be complemented with your daily use of AlkaVision Plasma pH Drops. Who isn't looking for more vibrance, vigor, and energy? Now buy two bottles of AlkaVision Plasma pH Drops and get $10 off your order. Visit AlkaVision.com or call 800-518-7615. AlkaVision Plasma pH Drops are packed with a powerful combination of the most alkaline minerals and compounds. Open the door to greater health, vitality, and zest for life. Alkalize your body. Supercharge your health. Call 800-518-7615 or head to AlkaVision.com. On Free Talk Live, we're bringing people to the ideas of liberty every day. From wrestling superstars like Glenn Jacobs. You guys really are having an impact, I believe. Like I said, uh, a lot of where I am now is due to listening to Free Talk Live. You changed my mind on some very important issues years ago. To random people tuning in on the radio. I was kind of stuck in the left-right paradigm. I heard your show by chance on a Saturday night. From there, I went on, joined the Free State Project, and become an amplifier. So, I mean, that's really the reason why I amp is uh, because I know that if it wasn't for you guys being on as many stations as you are, I never would have found the ideas of liberty. Your amp will directly change more lives by getting Free Talk Live in front of people looking for talk radio online and on the air. Find out about giving to our Google AdWords campaign at amp.freetalklive.com. That's amp freetalklive.com If you want to know the latest about Free Talk Live before we go on the air, all you need to decide is how you want it delivered. It's your choice. Visit news.freetalklive.com. You can get emailed announcements and participate in contests via our email updates list. Plus, we have a Twitter account that you can follow and a Facebook page where you can become a fan. So visit news.freetalklive.com to get news about Free Talk Live as soon as it's announced and the way you want it delivered at news.freetalklive.com. That's news.freetalklive.com. This is Mark of Free Talk Live. We've been witnessing a meltdown of the economic engine that powers our country. With a printing press tethered to Washington bureaucrats and New York central bankers, how can we trust paper money? For years, I've been buying gold and silver from Midas Resources, and you should too. Call 877-357-9938 for a free book titled 10 Reasons to Own Gold, or go to gold.freetalklive.com. Again, 877-357-9938. 877-357-9938. You can watch the LRN Studio Cam and chat with other listeners anytime at cam.lrn.fm. That's cam.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live, and there's breaking news. Uh, We were just talking earlier tonight about the beheading videos. There have been two um, before we started the show, and within the last hour or two, uh, the internet has become aware of a third new uh, beheading video that is looks very similar to the other ones. I have found what I believe to be the actual video. The audio track, however, is fairly low. I'm not at this point prepared to play it, uh, but we will take a take a closer look at it here as the show goes on and see if we can uh, get you some of that audio. 
Uh, I imagine it's very similar to the audio in the previous videos where the alleged chastening the uh, you know they they make the the poor victim uh, you know breed this dia tribe against the United States government and its foreign policy. In this case, it's uh, this one. This new one is a message to the allies of America. The first two videos were a message to America, part one and two, mm-hmm. and essentially the same message was that hey, uh, we're just going to keep killing people. Unless you stop killing our people, unless you stop the air raids and stop the bombings, uh, we're just going to keep lobbing people's heads off. And, and they- I think that that's obvious, and I think it's expected from by the United States government. I mean, consider for a second that the state is an organization that's intended to protect itself and that they consider you and yours to be the people that are there to protect it. They build big bomb shelters for the president, for the senators, for the representatives and whatever, you know, staffers that they bring in and their families, they don't build them for you. Mm-hmm. You, they draft when they feel like drafting or they'll, you know, whatever it is that they need to do. If they if if they need to, uh, you know, blow up your house for some strategic reason, they do it. We're going to go back to your calls and thoughts here. And again, we'll come back around to more on this uh, beheading situation, which continues to develop, unfortunately. And uh, there will be yet another victim in line, apparently, according to the early story that I read about this. But uh, the toll-free number here is 855-450-FREE. And Free Talk Live is brought to you by the AMP program. If you want to help us out, what we're doing here is we're doing five bucks a month. AMP program. AMP stands for Advertise, Market, and Promote. Your five bucks a month is invested into Free Talk Live so we can get on more radio stations, bring more internet listeners on board, and expose new people to the ideas of freedom. So please become an amplifier and also you'll get perks like access to the AMP only call in lines, the AMP only forum, podcast, AMP only uh, Facebook group now, and more. Go and get the details. Get signed up with any major credit card through PayPal or Visa or MasterCard right there on our website. Go to AMP dot freetalklive.com we go to charles listening in west virginia to wvts hey charles you're on free talk live uh greetings infidels <laughs> yes sir <laughs> go ahead i just was talking to john i just uh, got it across there that uh, david cameron uh, british prime minister had pretty much confirmed that that was david haynes that they beheaded mm. That's correct. David Haynes was the next in line for the beheadings, and now he has also allegedly been beheaded. Yes. Uh, as far as making those statements, uh, man, die in silence. Uh, don't give him any rebut. Well, no, hold on. Uh, no, wait, wait, wait. This, you got to remember, this isn't happening in a vacuum, right? Like, they've got this guy in captivity, and it's very likely that they're saying things to him like, you either read the script or we'll kill your wife. And if somebody says something like that to you, especially if they also provide you with the address of your wife and where she lives and where her kids go to school and things like that, uh, that could be very persuasive to make someone go ahead and just read the statement before they get killed. I was in a situation sort of similar to that once, and I kept my mouth shut. Well, that's vague. I'm glad it worked out. Uh, What what was the situation like? (laughs) Because my team came and got me. Uh, I was lucky. Well, yeah, you are lucky. In this case, uh, the fo- the family of James Foley, as we pointed out in the beginning of the show, and thanks, Charles, for the call tonight, the family of James Foley uh, is very upset about how the federal government has been so cold and non-compassionate towards them, and they were frustrated that it didn't seem like they were doing anything uh, for them at all. So these guys are just, they're being hung out to dry. Yeah, I and mean, these guys have no reasonable expectation that the U.S. government or any other government's going to do anything to protect them. At this mm-hmm. point, we're at uh, we're at beheading victim number three, and I don't know how many poor people they have to uh, of heads that they might swipe off, but they're probably looking for people. Right they're trying now. to fill the yep. queue. And those people have no reasonable expectation that the U.S. government or any of these other governments are going to do anything to protect them. So do they think, do I think that if for whatever reason some foreign group of nut jobs decided that they wanted to go after me and my family specifically, that there's anything the U.S. government would do to protect them? Only if they really wanted to. If they really wanted to, they could put us in some kind of victim protection plan thing and or whatever. But if they don't, then, you know, that's that. The question is, is if it's easier for me to just go ahead and read some nonsense to protect them, 
I guess that I would read the nonsense. I'm going to see if I can dub the audio from this video. As I said, it's a little on the low side, so I can't play it live off of YouTube. But I'm going to try to do some dubbing and pull up the uh, the levels here in a little bit. We'll try to grab that for you coming up in the uh, the third and final hour of the show. Plenty of time still for you with your thoughts. Let's go to Kevin. He's in Myrtle Beach uh, listening to WRNN. Hey, Kevin. Sir, I just got off work. You just got off work. Welcome. Kevin, you're on the air. Going once, going twice. All right, I'll tell you, we'll put him back on hold. Maybe he's, maybe he's like in a drive-through or something like that. I don't know. We'll give him a, we'll give him another chance here in a little bit. Uh, your thoughts are welcome here at toll-free number eight fifty-five four fifty free. So what we were talking about, and I want to get back into the beheading thing, but I want to get the audio set first. So we were talking about the plastic bag ban, and the update I had for you on that case, thanks to our producer Cyphase is fresh as of about a week ago. So the, the Senate passed this plastic bag ban in California about two weeks ago, apparently. And then within the last week, or about a week back, uh, California Governor Jerry Brown, according to the AFP, has said he will approve a ban on single-use plastic bags in what would make the western U.S. state the first to outlaw them. Lawmakers passed the bill late last Friday, that's two Fridays ago, and now requires Brown's signature to pass into law. It must be done before September. He said, quote, I probably will sign it, yes, and then went on to say, in fact, I'll tell you why I'm going to sign it. There are about 50 cities with their own plastic bag ban, and that's causing a lot of confusion, he said, cited uh, by the LA Times and other media, adding that this is a compromise. It's taking into account the needs of the environment, the needs of the economy, and the needs of the grocers. I don't know if that's true, but that's his claim. Under the California legislation, single-use plastic bags would disappear from grocery stores and pharmacies, uh, by July 1st, 2015. Then, in the next year, July 1st, 2016, they will no longer be allowed at convenience and liquor stores. So, I got a little bit more information about this from our man, uh, Saifes. Again, uh, one of our uh, listeners online who does a great job of giving us some info here, because... We don't have a produce, uh, producer staff. It's it's you and I sitting here, uh, Mark Edge. Thank God for Cyphes and the people like him. Yeah, he's doing great work here. So he linked me to that, and according to uh, the the actual bill, he found the, the the bill and pulled up the the text of the bill. According to the bill, quote, single use carry out bag means a bag made of plastic, paper, or other material that is provided by a store to a customer at the point of sale. And that is not a recycled paper bag or a reusable grocery bag that meets the requirements of Section 42281. So I was. So they can now use recycled paper bags again? They can use recycled paper bags only, not regular paper bags. Well, I think that you're just you've just created an industry where they're going to, you know, take rec- paper and make recycled paper bags, and nothing's going to really change. They All were right. trying to save the trees before, and the problem. Look, let's let's not forget that this whole problem was created with the outlawing of marijuana. Okay, mm, that's a good point. Because the fact is that paper bags back in the '80s, when we had paper bags, would have been made out of hemp instead of trees Mm -hmm. because hemp grows a lot faster than trees but oh my goodness congress outlawed hemp when it outlawed marijuana and they outlawed it accidentally mind you because they would have never outlawed cannabis if they would have used that word but william randolph hearst in fact uh, wanted them to outlaw this so they had this huge campaign towards it and this is the problem in the first place it's your legislation that created the plastic glut government good job yeah, well, as usual, Mark, government creates the problems that it then sets out to solve. The government created the problem of the plastic bag, and now the government claims they're going to solve the problem. Well, if the issue is that people are being messy and people are just letting their bags fly all over everywhere, that could still affect paper bags, although I'm sure the argument would be that the paper bags are going to decompose uh, you know, faster than plastic will, for instance. That's That much is probably true. Um, but again, if the concern is about the, the trees and the forest, then this isn't going to help that. Of course, the reality is if trees are in higher demand, then the marketplace will plant more of them. So the trees will be fine. You don't have to worry about the trees. Uh, well, I mean, you know, there's yes, if they're in high enough demand, that's absolutely true. But the land upon which trees grows tends to be far less valuable than the land upon which houses grow. Okay, I see where you're coming from, but that said, there's plenty of damn paper out there, and that's because the companies keep planting the trees. The answer's hemp. We'll come back with more. I I would love for that to be the answer, and it's a shame that they don't have that answer in California already, what with their openness to marijuana law changes. 
Uh, so we'll come back with more, and your thoughts are welcome. We'll also give you more on the ISIS video, the most recent beheading just coming out tonight. Oh, fall. A time for cooler temperatures and hot deals from America's Best Value Inn. Save 15% when you book a room online at americasbestvalueinn.com and stay now through October 23rd. Plus, you'll enjoy free continental breakfast, internet, and instant rewards through our Value Club at most of our 1,000 hotels in North America. Fall into savings this season at America's Best Value Inn. Do you drink coffee? Was the last cup of coffee you had really good? Free Talk Live has teamed up with BuzzBox to bring you the best of the best coffee. Shade grown, organic, top 1% grade Arabica. But what's different is for every 10 people that get their coffee through coffee.freetalklive.com, we can give another micro loan through Kiva. Get a free pound to try it out. A free pound of the best of the best coffee. Help others one cup at a time. Coffee.freetalklive.com. Radio is the most personal of mediums. I exist right now in your head. If you listen to Free Talk Live regularly, you know me. Free Talk Live is on more than 160 radio stations around the U.S. and has been downloaded on every continent around the world. Hundreds of thousands of listeners with ad packages from $600 a month to $6,000 a month. Imagine what we can do for your business, project, website, or idea. Email me, mark at freetalklive.com. Here's a chance to do a little activism while you're cruising Facebook, Twitter, or Google+. Between the LOL cats and the recipes, the hot girls, and the inspirational sunrise memes, Free Talk Live's posts pass by your newsfeed. Like them. Comment. It gives us more exposure. If you don't see our posts, click like at facebook.freetalklive.com and then hover over it to click get notifications. It's an easy way to spread the ideas of liberty a bit further. I know you're busy, but you can spare that tenth of a calorie it takes to click on something. Facebook.freetalklive.com. You're listening to the live edition of Free Talk Live. Hour number three is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network at LRN.FM. This is the Liberty Beat, your daily source for Liberty news and activist updates online at thelibertybeat.com. I'm Brian Hagan with your Liberty Beat for Friday, September 12th, 2014. Gold opened today at $1,237, silver opened at $18.55, and Bitcoin is trading around $472.50. Today's Bitcoin price brought to you by ExpressCoin, the fastest and most reliable way to buy Bitcoin. Buy Bitcoin today at ExpressCoin.com. And support for Liberty Beat comes from the Michael Cargill for Austin City Council District 1 campaign. Vote Michael Cargill to get the cars moving. Learn more or sign up to volunteer at CargillForTexas.com. Political advertisement paid for by the Michael Cargill for Austin City Council District 1 campaign. In the news, U.S. troops might, in extreme circumstances, be committed to ground operations in Iraq. Those words Wednesday from U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry contradict promises made by President Obama that there will be no boots on the ground in the fight against the Islamic State. The Miami Herald reports that Kerry made the statement during a news conference that followed a meeting with Iraqi officials. Kerry said those officials have not requested or shown any desire for U.S. intervention to assist against the Islamic State. Gun Owners of America is the latest and largest organization to publicly support Shaper Cox, the American political prisoner who's locked in a cage for allegedly conspiring to overthrow the government. Now, they've designed a flyer about Shaper to be handed out at gun shows. You can download a copy by visiting freeshapercox.com. Included in the flyer is a quote from Schaefer himself, written from his jail cell in Marion, Illinois. He writes, in part, our self-ownership, self-determination, and self-esteem rest on three essential legs. We must be able to think for ourselves, provide for ourselves, and defend ourselves. In Houston this week, a city employee was suspended for laying down on an American flag while working on a lawnmower. According to a report from Fox 13 in Houston, not only was he suspended from work, but the city's mayor is now demanding a public apology, as well as asking him to attend a flag retiring ceremony. Although the employee's actions were not illegal, it's causing an uproar, and he has yet to apologize. See a photo and tell the Liberty Beat what you think about it by visiting thelibertybeat.com or finding us on Facebook. Support for the Liberty Beat comes from Cabo Bob's, Southwestern-style burritos, now with two locations in Austin. 500 East Ben White Boulevard and 2828 Rio Grande Boulevard. Find them online, CaboBobs.com. And support comes from Sovereign Living, 
a podcast, blog, and reality show about what it takes to live a voluntary and natural life. Check out the blog at SovereignLiving.com and watch episode one of the soon-to-be-released reality show at SovereignLiving.tv. This is The Liberty Beat for Friday, September 12, 2014. Check out the website at TheLibertyBeat.com and like us on Facebook at Facebook.com, The Liberty Beat. Senator Ted Cruz has met with opposition in his defense of Israel. ABC News reports it happened this week during a dinner Cruz attended held by the In Defense of Christians organization. Cruz ultimately walked out, telling the crowd that booed him that, quote, if you will not stand with Israel, if you will not stand with the Jews, then I will not stand with you. The vocal opposition apparently began when Cruz told the crowd, today Christians have no greater friend than the Jewish state. The Medina Farm in Wharton, Texas, will be hosting a hands-on workshop about food. The Farm Food Family Weekend will include three food-centric events. Friday, November 14th, will feature a farm-to-table dinner with an exclusive local menu created and prepared by Chef Nancy Foster. The next event is an organic cooking class titled How to Stretch a Chicken Five Ways. The event is Saturday, November 15th, also led by Chef Nancy. And the third and final event for the weekend is the Fundamentals of Farming Seminar that will take place Saturday, November 15th. Seating is limited for all three events. Tickets are expected to sell out, so get them early. Visit the MedinaFarm.com for more information and ticket pricing info. Dr. Paul Conant, toxicologist and founder of the Fluoride Action Network, was in San Marcos yesterday for a lunch meeting with city council members and city staff and for a happy hour with community activists. Present at the meeting was Mayor Daniel Guerrero, Councilwoman Lisa Pruitt, and Councilman Wayne Beekack. John Bush, founder of the Liberty Beat and San Marcos resident, was also in attendance. He said the council members seemed genuinely interested and asked some great questions. The visit came as momentum for a city petition drive to put the question of fluoridation to a vote is gaining steam. Join us next week for an in-depth report on the council members' feedback and Dr. Conant's wisdom and advice during the meeting. Today's edition of the Liberty Beat is brought to you by Brave New Books, your source for all things Bitcoin, now hosting a Bitcoin ATM, located in Austin, Texas, 1904 Guadalupe Street, or online, bravenewbookstore.com. This is the Liberty Beat for Friday, September 12, 2014. I'm Brian Hagen reporting. According to a new report, the vast majority of Americans simply want to be safe, happy, rich, comfortable, entertained, thin, and romantically fulfilled. The Onion spoke to a few of the survey's respondents who also claimed they want to be healthy, fulfilled, and successful, and energized at all times. All I want is a low-stress job, a nice house, affordable health care, and low gas prices, you know? It would be nice to have a 35-hour work week, delicious food that's actually good for me, strong friendships, and free high-speed Wi-Fi wherever I go. I think I'm entitled to wealth, love, cheap education, a fair legal process. According to the survey, 63% of all Americans want their summers to be hot but not too hot. 85% want the government to stop all wars and world hunger and make quick and easy weight loss possible. 93% want to be emotionally satisfied, plus a soulmate, unconditional love from their parents, and a big happy dog. This is the Onion News Network. This is Free Talk Live. We'll take your calls here toll-free at 855-450-FREE. You bring up anything that's on your mind. 855-450-3733. We've talked about everything from Bike Week and sort of the police state on the rise with militarism, uh, disconnecting the police from the average people and making things worse over time. We've also discussed uh, the beheadings. The videos, and there's a new one that literally just uh, came out within the time that we've been doing this radio show. Uh, so that's breaking news. We talked about the beheadings from the aspect of the family and how difficult things have been for them, just not only because they've lost their loved one, but because the government agents with whom they've been dealing over the last several uh, years or months uh, have been very uncompassionate towards them, been very rude, threatening even. In some cases, uh, government agents threatening the family of James Foley, the first victim, the first alleged victim of the beheadings by alleged ISIS members in Iraq, uh, that uh, James Foley's family was really frustrated by the, the poor treatment on behalf of the government officials. You are welcome to share your thoughts on anything that happens to be on your mind. Toll free number tonight, 855-450-FREE. And I do have the audio track from the next, the third 
uh, beheading video where the Briton who they were holding is executed or is allegedly executed. The version of the video that I have found, and it's hard as hell to find these things sometimes online. Right, because every um, I'd like to say right now, all of you people who upload a video and then call it the original in the title and just in order to get some clicks – there's a special place in hell for you. It's a terrible thing to do. And I mean, nobody's going to subscribe to your channel if you put a bunk video up anyway. So I'm not sure if it's really going to get them that much because people are going to see real quickly that it's not a full on video. And so they're going to stop playing it. They're not going to play all the way through. Now, I don't know if you have to play all the, all the way through to get credit for a view on YouTube as far as, you know, if they pay you or not. But regardless, it's frustrating. I did find one where there's the speech by the man who was the captive and then they don't show the sawing in this version. In mm. the in the other versions that we've seen, the the, the man begins to saw at the the man the mast man uh, begins to saw at the necks, and then it fades down to black, and then fades in to show the body, uh, or what is alleged to be the body. This video doesn't have any of that. It just has the man making his statement, and then the guy, the man in the mask, showing the next victim. So I suspect that. Uh, because it's on YouTube, and I link to it on our Google Plus and Facebook and Twitter, you can go to news.freetalklive.com to link over to whichever one of those that you prefer. Uh, so if you want to take a look at this for yourself, it's it's there. And I'm asking uh, for assistance. If you found the actual one, and Ogrish didn't have it this time. I went straight there. They had it last time uh, on the second video. They had that. Mm -hmm. They don't have it yet. Uh, for all I know, it may be there by the time we wrap up the show. But we'll play the audio track for you from what we do have here in a moment. Back to your phone calls and thoughts first, though. Kevin, listening in Myrtle Beach to WRNN. Hello, Kevin. Hey, guys. How you doing tonight? Good. You're on the air. Go ahead. All right. Um, well, I wanted to talk about the bike week thing. It was not like beating a dead horse. No, um, go for it. Yeah, we haven't beat this horse nearly, nearly this dead horse th nearly that much. Go ahead. All right. Well, uh, you know, the thing that the last guy for, you know, failed to mention, he brought up the race aspect of it. And, you know, I guess that is there. Is it um, called the, Black Bike Week? It is. It is called Black Bike Week. Already? Uh, the first one uh, that precedes it by a couple of weeks is just called Bike Week. Um, but Black, Black Bike Week takes place in around four blocks going right through our main highway that goes through town. Okay. Uh, so it clogs up pretty much everything and may, you know, it makes it harder for everybody like me that works in the, in the city. Um, sure. That's pretty much true with any event though. I mean, I've got to say that we have pumpkin fest here in Keene. You can't travel on pumpkin And I wish fest. these, you know, all these stinking tourists that are here spending money at all these uh, businesses where I don't make a penny off of it would go away. But obviously people want them there. Yeah. I mean, you know, I, I can't say that there's not people that don't want them here, but, you know, the, the um, I guess you could say the mumbles and grumbles that go on whenever Black Bike Week finally comes through, at least, you know, from what I hear is worse than the one that Bike Week comes up with. And I think it's just because it, it lasts a few days longer, it seems like, uh, hmm. you know, it's with the people that straggle and stay in town, and it, it just cuts off the main – um, the main flow going into the city. And then you have what the first guy said, you know, it pretty much becomes a police state, um, which, by the way, you were talking about the police that actually just went through a roadblock. Um, <laughs> uh, do you feel free? I, I feel safe. It's the uh, freest country on earth, son. They're going to free the hell out of me. But yeah. uh, they, uh, it, it turns into a police state. And, I mean, you, you can't go through any section of town without getting um, – you know, without getting at least looked at by the cops, if not worse. And it's not a big town, but that's a pretty big deal to be happening, um, you know, in Myrtle Beach. It's a real small area. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, I don't think that they should do away with it, but I do know that during Black Bike Week, and, I, you know, you could chalk it up to race or whatever, but the police presence is a lot stronger mm -hmm. and the crime goes up. But, you know... There's a number of things that could factor into that. You know what? It's interesting. Uh, we saw – I forget which, which school it was. I think it was in Boston. But they uh, there was a charter school that had a lot of real security apparatus like you know metal detectors, armed guards, that kind of thing at the school. Like a prison. Uh, they had those sorts of uh, accoutrements, and the uh, the school got taken over by a new new administrator, a new principal, and the first thing he did was get rid of the uh, security staff and get rid of the checkpoints. 
and actually, you know, totally wiped out all the security in the entire school. And some people would say, you know, well, that's crazy because kids are going to start stabbing each other. And, well, that's, you know, the security was there for a reason. Well, it turns out you take away the security apparatus, people start behaving better. The students were not hurting each other as often. There wasn't as much violence as soon as they got the armed guards out of there. So I think that having the extra police presence could actually be, uh, be stirring up uh, issues. Well, you know, I... Uh... This, you know, it's police state USA, and I, I happen to be young enough to have grown up in it, but old enough to be out of it. Um, but, you know, when I went to high school, it was mandatory that everybody carry IDs. And a lot of people like uh, me and the other metalheads uh, decided just to, no, we're not bringing them. Nice. And civil disobedience. Really know... Oh, yeah. Yeah. I you love know, it. all of. Most of the time, I probably just forgot it, but, you know. but <laughs> <laughs> It felt like you were sticking so wait, to what the happened? man. <laughs> so what happened when you didn't bring him? What were the consequences? If you didn't bring it, uh, you would get an ISS, which stands for in-school suspension, and mm-hmm. you would go to a classroom with all the other troublemakers for the day. And if you're me, you would sit there and listen to music and read Stephen King till the end of the day. It probably happened to me about six times and there's really unless you got a behavioral problem they're not going to expel you or suspend you outside (laughs) of school and really all that it does is if you think that the school is actually educating you all it actually does is take away your education for the day right and that's the the most baffling thing about in school suspension to me is exactly what are you trying to teach this kid (laughs) you know the the only times i guess i ever had to worry about something like in school suspension i could have left um at any point so I, i i don't know i mean it's just very confusing but i think they've raised the age now to uh 18 at the time it was 16 but any kid in New Hampshire, I've done that. Uh, I, it's probably across the nation in different places. Um, it's probably not just New Hampshire. You well, know, it I mean? was New Hampshire that that raised it from sixteen to eighteen. You're talking about the. Uh, do you think that New Hampshire is the only state in America that has raised the age from sixteen to eighteen, or do you that. think that somehow our um, legislators just got this idea? I'm not on their saying own? that. I'm just saying that your mileage may vary. It may still be sixteen. Just where you to be are, clear, your know. mileage may vary, but every student out there can talk to their parents about being homeschooled, so everybody can leave. If they want. Kevin, any other thoughts? Go ahead. Well, uh, <laughs> I don't know. As far as the whole, you know, you can leave if, if if you want. I know I was 18 and didn't have enough credits to get early dismissal, as they call it here. And um, I ended up having to just pick up uh, one class at the end of the day. And I asked if I could leave at the, you know, after my, you know, this class doesn't matter. What do I need it for? And I was told no. Well, whenever you ask a bureaucrat permission, you're going to be told no. The answer is no. Uh, Especially if you're in a government school. Thanks, Kevin, for the call tonight. I appreciate it, man. (laughs) Toll-free numbers 855-450-FREE. Better to ask forgiveness than permission. And a lot of people, when when they're a teenager, even because you've turned 18, doesn't mean you've been educated as to your rights and what it means that you've turned 18, what what sort of legal changes happen. Uh, so, you know, many people are still in the dark about that. So, therefore, they would believe what they're told by the bureaucrats. Because sure. they seem authoritative. 855-450 freeze the toll-free number. You take control here of Free Talk Live. we got the beheading audio coming up. I want to share something important. That will not only improve your life, but the lives of many others as well. And all you need to do is drink coffee. I'm not talking about harmful store-bought or chain coffee. No, this is truly the best of the best coffee. We've partnered with Kamano Island Coffee Roasters to offer BuzzBox. With every purchase, 10% goes towards our efforts to give the gift of human freedom by providing at least 100 microfinance loans via World Vision. So literally, just one cup at a time, you're having an impact in helping make a difference in the world. And one sip will have you buzzing to family and friends. To prove just how good it is, we're giving a free pound of coffee to everyone in the audience. All you do is cover shipping. Go to coffee.freetalklive.com. Buzzbox Coffee is organic, so it contains no pesticides or toxins. It's shade-grown, so less acidity and no heartburn. It's top 1% Arabica grade and gives people the opportunity to own their own coffee farms. Join us in making a huge impact at coffee.freetalklive.com. 
Adam Miller here with Midas Resources. Today, September 10th, 2014, gold opened at 1249.40. A one ounce gold coin can be purchased for 1295.12, 647.56 for a half ounce, or 323.78 for a quarter ounce. That's 1295.12, 647.56, and 323.78. Hi, this is Ted Anderson. Have you ever wondered why banks, stockbrokers, investment advisors won't talk about gold IRAs? Wait a sec. Gold and silver is going up while Congress is trying to settle on the next debt increase. And there's no end to this madness. That old 401k and IRA can be converted into physical gold without tax consequences. I explain this in my book, 10 Reasons to Buy Gold. Don't let time slip away. Call for your free copy today, 800-686-2237. Get away from that Washington spin and get honest answers about gold. 800-686-2237. The book is free, 800-686-2237. Are you looking for an excuse to come check out New Hampshire this fall? You're invited to Keenvention. Keenvention is your chance to meet dozens of key liberty activists from across the Shire. You can explore the beautiful little city of Keene, discuss various forms of activism with seasoned veterans, do some Robin Hooding, and learn about making the move. Keenvention received rave reviews last year. If you missed it, visit Keenvention.info for full video coverage of every speaker and panel. This year, Rich Paul is our first announced keynote speaker, and more are being announced now at Keenvention.info. Join old and new friends and neighbors in Keen for Keenvention this October 31st through November 2nd. You can pre-order your tickets now for just $60 at Keenvention.info, or you can pay with Bitcoin. Visit Keenvention.info for more information and to lock in your tickets at the pre-order $60 price for the whole weekend. Visit Keenvention.info for more. Or look for our page and event on Facebook. That's keenvention.info. So you've heard all three hours of the latest episode of Free Talk Live, and you're still hungry for liberty-oriented audio content? Did you know that we have another 24-7 audio stream at lrn.fm? The Liberty Radio Network airs the latest episodes of some of the best liberty-oriented podcasts on the internet around the clock. In addition to recorded content, you'll also hear live shows like Free Talk Live, originating from our Keene, New Hampshire studio. So listen anytime at lrn.fm. That's lrn.fm. If there was a place that liberty-minded people had been elected to political positions and were rolling back government, would you move there? If freedom lovers had secured a 20% voting block and can veto most bad bills, would you move? Well, the time has come to sign the pledge at freestateproject.org. These things have happened in New Hampshire, and you can join us and help. freestateproject.org. Sign up now at freestateproject.org. You're listening to the best liberty-oriented audio streamed around the clock, on the air, and online. This is the Liberty Radio Network at lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live, still to come, the audio from the video of the alleged third beheading. Now, the video version that we've found thus far does not actually contain uh, gore as the last two videos had, where the last two videos showed what was ostensibly the body of the victim and the head of the victim sitting on top of the body. You do not see footage like that in this version of the video that I have posted on our Facebook, Google+, and Twitter, so I suspect that the one that we've posted is not the original So if we do find the original, we will repost that for you uh, to inspect if you care to. And if you don't care to, I don't blame you. Yeah, I don't blame uh, you at all. It's it's a horrifying idea that people are being executed over there. But it's also it's also not hard to understand why it's happening. I mean, these guys are upset. The ISIS folks are upset about bombing campaigns that are killing their friends and and probably family members. Uh, people are being destro- lives are being destroyed, and so they feel like they have to take lives in response. And this is I the cycle of violence. Well. It, Okay, I, I the, the, they're violent as hell already. Um, what they're trying to do? Sure, they're a state. They're dissuading the United States from being involved in their violence in the hopes they that they can. They have not dissuaded them. Th- they have not, and they likely will not. Right. Uh, what they likely have done is sealed all of their death certificates um, with this. You think so? 
Yeah, I think that yes, I do. I well, don't. You think the you think the the so U.S. Far, military's you know, campaign is going to be successful against these guys? I think that they're going to do what they're going to do. I mean, I don't think they're going to play defense, just like the uh, the U.S. has been against defenders all this time in Iraq. And uh, ultimately, you know, they've had a tough time against against a ragtag group of insurgents over there. What they've done is they've killed people, created more enemies, killed people, created more enemies. But that doesn't bring back the dead people. That's you true. See, so if you the people, I'm claiming the people in ISIS are likely to die. But not, more will join. Not that, that, that uh, the organization ISIS won't morph into something else because right. the United States fought uh, Al-Qaeda in Iraq, which is what uh, ISIS was uh, ahead of time in Iraq, uh, helped them in Libya, helped them in uh, Syria, and now is fighting them again in Iraq. Meh. I, I, color me unimpressed. Well, they haven't wiped out the terrorists yet, Mark, so I don't think they're going to be wiping them out this time because the more people the they kill— The terrorists can't be wiped out, Ian. That's what I'm saying. It's, it sounded like you said the U.S. was going to wipe them out or something yes, like that. Yes, they are going to wipe these people out. But there will be more of them. That's because correct. for every bomb that's dropped, for every life that is extinguished, there are people connected to those people who get upset. Rightfully so, and decide they're going to do something about it. Now, I don't believe that violence solves problems. I don't support what ISIS well, is doing, I and violence, I don't support what the government is doing either. You I think, think violence can solve problems, yes, but I don't think that it's a good solution in this circumstance, especially when you've been doing it for decades and it hasn't been working. Well, feeding into the cycle of violence does not solve problems. It just creates more violence, which is what we're seeing happen here. One beheading results in more bombings, resulting in another beheading, resulting in no more bombings. And it just never, it's not going to end until somebody breaks the cycle and says, we're going to stop this now. And of course, the U.S. government is not going to do that. No. Nope. And I don't think the ISIS guys are going to do it either. Your thoughts They're are welcome. They're not going to do it. 855 450 free. Something that you can do. You can't control what the federal government does. Your votes will not control what happens. Uh, you know, if you vote in 2016, that likely will have no effect whatsoever on Middle East policy. They will continue to likely continue to warmonger over there. Uh, so, what you can do is you can have an effect in people's lives, and you can help out folks who are being attacked by the government. People who are being attacked in the court system, like Andrew Jones, he is one of the alleged administrators of the Silk Road, which is an underground black marketplace uh, where all kinds of interesting products are available to be sold. The government tried to shut him down back last year. Silk Road popped back up, and uh, four, four alleged administrators were arrested. One of those four is Andrew Jones. He's a Free State Project participant. He, like many thousands of individuals, has plans to make the move to New Hampshire as part of the Free State Project, but he can't move. He's on house arrest. He can't leave his parents' house until this legal situation is dealt with. He's facing the rest of his life in prison over running one of the most infamous websites online. Some say the Silk Road's a terrible place. I say it's a heroic operation that has saved lives and has helped uh, have helped keep people healthy by, uh, or at least as healthy as possible, considering they're using you know illicit narcotics. Uh, but because you know the Silk Road actually makes the drug market safer, it makes the products better, and so people have literally not died of overdoses and not died of being robbed and beaten uh, when they were doing drug deals. So the Silk Road has helped keep people alive. There's no doubt about it. So I think Andrew Jones is a hero if he actually did run the Silk Road, which he may not have, in which case he's a man wrongfully accused. And you can help support him by going to Drewsdefense.org. That's Drews Defense. Dot org. We go to your calls, and then we'll get to the audio from the video of the beheading, the most recent one that literally just hit the internet uh, within the last couple of hours. Fred, though, is first listening in Myrtle Beach to WRNN. Hey, Fred. Hey, what's going on? We're doing yeah, a radio I, show. Go ahead with your thoughts. Uh, you, you guys are the only people that talk about hemp on a on positive sense. Hemp, hemp is a positive the, thing? Okay. You mean the only people on the radio who talk <laughs> about hemp positively? Yeah, 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 most of Americans will talk positively about hemp. I know. But, and as far as the bike, bike week, I live, I, live in, I live in Surston. I'm about five miles from Myrtle Beach. But the people that start the trouble, it's like the same thing in Ferguson. There are people that don't live there. Mm, yeah, people that's certainly true. Trouble. That's, That's certainly true thing. with uh, with like college kids here in Keene, New Hampshire. They're more likely to be starting issues and destroying property because, as you say, they don't live here. They're not going to be, yeah. after the next three years are up, they're going to go yeah. out of college and they're going to go probably back to New York or wherever. But on the positive, our taxes are cheaper because they have a lot of bike weeks here. They have Holly Week and this and that week. And that our tax, if we, if we, if we 
be paying much more tax, property tax, if they didn't have them. So, Fred, anything else you want to share with us tonight? Yeah, about the thing in Iraq. Just I'll say one word: crusade. What is that supposed to mean? It never ended. How long did it take for that? How many crusades were there? How many people got killed? And it's still going on. Those people don't like people. Well, those people don't like people is a very generic statement, and I don't know who you mean. When you say those people, who do you mean? The people, the the Turks, the Arabs, whatever you want to call them. That's a ridiculous thing to say. I mean, I to to uh, to make a statement like that is like saying that all Irish people are drunk, and it's uh, it's it sounds <laughs> kind of bigoted. Only most Irish people are drunk. It sounds kind of bigoted. <laughs> I, thank you, Fred, for the call tonight. I appreciate hearing from you. The toll free number is eight fifty five four fifty free. People like people in a lot of cases. A lot of people like people. That's why we mostly get along in the world. There's not rampant violence everywhere because people like people, and the people they don't like, they don't have to really talk to or deal with in a lot of cases. So it's not really that big a deal. Of the people you don't like. You don't have to go around killing everybody you don't like. Are there extremists who don't like anyone or who hate everyone who's not in their particular religion? Sure. Those people exist. And they're Christian extremists and they're Muslim extremists and they're other extremists. I think there are also cultural differences. I think that you can see different cultures react differently to different situations. Sure, in New Hampshire, it's more likely that somebody walking by you on the street will look at you and acknowledge your presence and say hello to you. Whereas in larger cities like New York, for instance, that may not be as common. That's a cultural difference, for sure. You're just more likely to get asked for money if you uh, make eye contact in big cities. Toll-free number tonight is 855-450-FREE. There's a new beheading video, or what is alleged to be a beheading video, of the of the most recent victim. We have the audio track from it. We'll play it for you here. We'll see what they have to say. In moments, you can also bring up whatever's on your mind. Plus, we'll talk about the outer net. You've heard about the internet. Have you heard of the outer net? It's Free Talk Live. This is Dan Pillard. Do you owe the IRS money you can't pay? Are tax debts crippling you? I've defended people from the IRS for over 30 years. I've helped thousands, and I can help you, too. I wrote the book on IRS settlement, and I'm telling you, there's no such thing as a hopeless case. Call 800-34-NO-TAX to finally get free of IRS debt. With the IRS's new programs, there's never been a better time to solve your problem. Call 800-34-NO-TAX. That's 800-34-NO-TAX or my website, danpilla.com. Does advertising on the Genesis Communications radio network actually bring positive results? Let's ask Thomas Baldrick from Freeze Dry Guy. Thomas, talk about customer service at GCN. GCN is extraordinary in how they take care of their customers. The bottom line, Freeze Dry Guy keeps advertising on GCN because it works. If you'd like to experience unbelievable customer service, call Lee Wickenhauser at 877-996-4327, extension 107. Markets went into a frenzy today after the price of money suddenly skyrocketed to $90 a dollar. Onion reporter spoke to economics professor Mark Cosgrave about the soaring cost of U.S. currency and the impact of increasingly unpredictable dollar-to-dollar rates. Right now, money prices are steeply rising with no signs of slowing down. This morning alone, the price of dollars nearly tripled, with one cent worth approximately $6. That's exponentially higher than even a week ago when money was trading at roughly $53 on the dollar. To put it bluntly, we're now in the midst of a national economic crisis. According to Cosgrave, the abrupt spike in dollar prices initially caused many Americans to hold on to their money, hoping that the $90 cost of dollars would soon dip back down. But as prices continued to climb, investors panicked and began purchasing as much money as possible. But with the cost of quarters hitting $4.97 and the $5 bill jumping to a 12-year high of $372, the days when you could get $30 or $40 for just a couple of bucks are unfortunately long gone. This is the Onion News Network. This Your Family Today tip is brought to you by Boost Kit Essentials Nutritionally Complete Drink. Providing your picky eater with essential nutrition and great taste in one drink. Visit us at kitessentials.com. To make sure your kids eat healthy, follow the five-a-day plan. Serve three servings of vegetables and two servings of fruit daily. Remember, a serving could just mean a piece of fruit or a half cup of veggies. If your kids are picky eaters, ask a nutritionist about other sources. For more tips like these, visit us at parenthood.com slash yourfamilytoday. 
Free Talk Live has partnered with Amazon, the largest internet retailer. Imagine a department store category, and Amazon has it. Books, electronics, office products, furniture, jewelry, automotive, toys, clothing, sporting goods, and dozens of other categories. Now you can shop and support Free Talk Live by entering Amazon through our website. Go to shop.freetalklive.com, and Amazon will send us a portion of your purchase. You're going to do the shopping anyway, so remember to enter through our site at shop.freetalklive.com. That's shop.freetalklive.com. What if the key to achieving liberty in your lifetime was to move together with others who think like you? Liberty activists are joining the Free State Project, which is over 70% of the way to its goal of 20,000 participants. And they're already making the move to New Hampshire. The successes are piling up and are proving the Free State Project is a real movement and no longer just a great idea. When you're planning your move, consider Keene. Keene is famous for its civil disobedience and non-cooperation, and there's plenty of political opportunity as well. From demonstrations and vigils to outreach and volunteering, there's a lot going on in Keene. Keene is the liberty media capital of the world, with television, talk radio, and more, all originating here. Though it's more than just activism, with regular social events each week. See what's happening at freekeen.com and get connected with video, audio, free books, a forum, and activist tools you can download and use in your area at freekeen.com. That's freekeen.com. While our satellite channel is free to listen to, it's not free for us. You can help us cover our satellite costs with the chip in on the right side of the page at lrn.fm. Free Talk Live. It's the live Saturday show. It's Ian here with you. And Mark. And you can join us here on the air at 855-450-FREE. That's the Pro XPN toll-free line. What is Pro XPN, you may be asking? Well, it's a global virtual private network. If you care about privacy online, and you should, if you've been paying attention to the news in the last year with the Edward Snowden revelations about the NSA and security not bas just basically not existing... On the internet, you have to take steps. You have to take action to protect yourself. And ProXPN is part of the actions that you should be taking. Go to ProXPN.com slash FTL. You can download their software there for Windows, Macintosh, iOS devices, and Android devices. Linux users, there's a setup process for you, but it's a little bit different. Pretty easy, though. ProXPN.com slash FTL. The software is free. You just download it, get started. You can connect to ProXPN and try it out. Now, the bandwidth is limited on the free account. Uh, but basically what ProXPN is doing is they're encrypting your data connection meaning your internet service provider will no longer be aware of what it is you're doing or where you're going or what you're searching for. They're probably logging all of that information right now and maybe keeping those logs for up to five years in some cases. Put a stop to it by going to ProXPN.com, getting started with ProXPN, and then upgrade when you're ready to their premium account for unlimited bandwidth, servers all around the world, as well as the ability to privately torrent and get past regionally blocked websites. You get it all with a risk-free seven-day money-back guarantee, and ProXPN doesn't keep records of your online surfing habits. You can get it for 50% off the price of the annual account by using our special promo code. That code is FTL, like Free Talk Live, and then the number 50. That's FTL50 to get 50% off. Brings the price down to around 5 bucks a month on that annual account. But if that's not good enough, then pay with Bitcoin and save 62%. Use this code in the case of Bitcoin. It's FTLBTC. So either code will work, FTL50 or FTLBTC. Get a great discount on privacy protection that is priceless at ProXPN.com slash FTL. Here is the audio track from the most recent video allegedly posted online within the last couple of hours by members of ISIS. It purportedly shows hostage David Haynes is beheading. Now, the video that we're going to play the audio from is a minute 28 long. It's from a channel on YouTube called You Face News, and I did put the link on our Facebook, Google+, and Twitter. You can access all three of those by going to news.freetalklive.com. And uh, I believe this is not the full video. I suspect there's maybe a few seconds missing of possibly some slicing at the throat. If this video was made like the other ones have been, the first two, there were scenes of uh, throat slicing, but no blood. It fades away as the slicing begins. The other videos faded away mm -hmm. as the slicing begins. They then faded away from the fading into black, then from black fading back into a shot of the corpse 
with the, the alleged victim's head uh, perched atop of the corpse. The gore is missing from this particular video, so I suspect there's another one out there, and we'll, when we come across it, we'll let you know. But here's the audio, and that's obviously the most useful thing for radio anyway. So normally the videos start with a statement from the beheading victim prior to the beheading, and that is what this one does. My name is David Cawthorn Haynes. I would like to declare that I hold you, David Cameron, entirely responsible for my execution. You entered voluntarily into a coalition with the United States against the Islamic State, just as your predecessor, Tony Blair, did, following a trend amongst our British Prime Ministers who can't find the courage to say no to the Americans. Unfortunately, it is we, the British public, that in the end will pay the price for our Parliament's selfish decisions. I'm going to just stop it there before he goes on. There's nothing inaccurate at all about what he's saying here. It's the British public and the American public who are going to pay the prices for the politicians' decisions because the politicians sure as hell aren't going to be on the battlefield catching bullets, and they're not going to be the ones getting abducted and having their heads cut off because you can damn well better believe that if Barack Obama's wife or daughters were the ones that were being held by these uh, these militant folks, that there sure as hell would be several rescue missions uh, put into this. They, they damn well would raise whatever uh, they needed to to go in there and do what they needed to. Likely to things would them. be entirely different, right? Yeah. But these poor folks, the people that love the, the men who've been executed thus far, they have been hamstrung. They haven't even been allowed to try to raise money to, uh, to pay the ransoms to get their loved ones out. They're not allowed to do anything. They can't even lift a finger yeah. to interfere with that situation. Let me continue here with the audio. This British man has to pay the price for your promise, Cameron, to arm the Peshmerga against the Islamic State. Ironically, he has spent a decade of his life serving under the same Royal Air Force that is responsible for delivering those arms. Your evil alliance with America, which continues to strike the Muslims of Iraq and most recently bombed the Haditha Dam, will only accelerate your destruction. And playing the role of the obedient lapdog Cameron will only drag you and your people into another bloody and unwinnable war. Now, at this point in the video, the, there's a cut. And that's, I think, where they're cutting out the gory part, whoever it was that put this video online, I imagine because they didn't want YouTube to pull it down or something like that. Uh, so that's where there's a cut. And then there's another scene where the British-voiced uh, man in the mask says something I couldn't make out when I first played it through. So, Mark, maybe you'll be able to, uh, to okay. understand him here. In the, the final scene, is as has been with all of the three of the videos so far, the final scene, he's got the next victim. So they've got the fourth victim sitting there kneeling down and they're showing who this person is he doesn't name him at the end but someone will probably have his name here shortly i imagine in the the mainstream media here's the uh, the remainder of the clip okay. cameron persist in fighting the islamic state then you like your master obama will have the blood of your people on your hands yeah i'm not really sure what exactly he says there uh but the blood of people are going to be on your hands and that much is, uh, is certainly true these politicians it sounds like he called obama a name no, he's talking with talking to Cameron. Talking yes, to yes, but the, like the something Obama. Let me play it one more time. To fight in the Islamic State, then you, like your master Obama, will have the blood of your people. Oh, like your on master, your like your you, like your master, you, like your master Obama, will have blood uh, of the people on your hands. Got it. So there you go, Mark. Any thoughts on uh, the new video here? I feel terrible about these things. They're they're just so awful. I. I guess that this is uh, th this just is just sort of a reasonable expectation of what's going on in the Middle East. Yeah, they're not you know a lot of these people aren't going to like your meddling. Do I like yeah. those people? No, no. This is I terrible. think that these are awful, disgusting individuals that wish to take over governments. But those are the kinds of people that rise to power. I mean, take a look at our system. You have to be a narcissist. You have to be a sociopath to get into these offices of power. Pretty much. So in this case, are they more brutal? Yeah, they are. But 
The United States has killed far more people in the Middle East uh, through bombing campaigns over the course of the last couple of uh, decades or last decade or so than this ISIS uh, has. Well, I, I can't say of, that. Mi- of uh, Americans, that's for sure. I don't see how you can say that the ISIS guys are more brutal than the United States. I mean, if you just look at raw numbers of dead people, uh, I imagine a lot of those dead people died in very brutal, uh, horrifying manners with various different limbs missing uh, and then, you know, bleeding out after having a experienced an ex- a nearby explosion uh that's that's pretty brutal too i mean uh, that's sick agreed but you know the fact is the you don't um, americans don't see it they that much is true we we don't get to see these things as opposed to not get to but uh, we don't have to see these things because our news media won't show it protect they won't you. show soldiers coming back in bags yeah that's why the vietnam war ended when it did was because the media back then was showing it and people didn't like what they saw yeah Hey, let's talk about something good. Let's talk about some good news, some exciting uh, technology news. I've been holding on to this story for a few um, a few days now, ever since I discovered this interesting company or this group called Outernet. Mark, have you heard about this yet? Outernet? I've only heard what you've said about it. Uh, I haven't said anything about it on the air. No. Uh, it's uh, it, according to the story here over at Fast Company, Fast Co. FastCollabs.com is their site. In 2013, when Typhoon Haiyan brought down most of the Philippines' cell phone and radio towers, bringing information to a standstill at a crucial moment. The same thing happened again earlier this month in Ukraine. Uh, I don't know when this was written, by the way. But at this time, it was men with political motives, not nature. Probably a few months ago. Uh, not nature that severed access to the country's largest internet service provider. A fledgling system of low Earth orbit satellites known as the Outer Net might mean an end to information outages like this. Let's talk about what, how they're planning on doing that here in moments. It's Free Talk Live. Wake up and smell the freedom. One of the easiest things you can do to help liberty is to torrent Freedom Fiends episodes to help keep them drone proof. You can set up your home computer to download and share Freedom Fiends archives over BitTorrent. You can even set up scheduling so it only shares while you're asleep or at work. Put your unused computing power to work and help keep the Freedom Fiends around well into the future. Simply go to freedomfiends.com and click on the Torrent Club link and learn how to torrent and share Freedom Fiends archives. Ross Ulbricht was arrested by the FBI in 2013 and charged with victimless crimes in relation to allegedly operating the Bitcoin-based Silk Road black market. He has been in a prison cell awaiting trial ever since. If he did it, he's a hero for making the black market a safer place. If he did not, he's a man wrongfully accused. Either way, if you love freedom and want to end the war on drugs, Ross and his family need your support. You can learn more and help fund his defense at freeross.org. That's freeross.org. Summertime is save big time at Herbal Healer Academy. Long-term customers know summer is the time to stock up at herbalhealer.com. And for new customers, welcome to the web's best place to save on vitamins, minerals, and more. Log on for summer specials, including all sizes of colloidal silver, colloidal minerals, and intestinal freedom on sale. Choose from Herbal Healer's great variety of weight loss products like apple cider vinegar, hoodia, and metabolic complex and pro-metabolic all on sale now. Also, the anti-parasite intestinal freedom and wormwood plus complex plus stevia liquid sweetener and the super enzymes all on sale for summer at herbalhealer.com. As always, we offer certificate correspondence courses in natural medicine. Enjoy same-day shipping and free online newsletter. Log on now to HerbalHealer.com and look for summer specials to save big with our nation's leader in supplying quality natural medicine and education. Since 1988, Herbal Healer Academy. Did you agree? Did you totally agree? I'll bet that you did. But did you read the agreement? There are 7 billion people on Earth, and there are over 6 billion active cell phone accounts right now, and every one of them came with an agreement. Billions have already agreed to allow entities that they do not know to use and abuse every feature of their mobile devices. Your computer activity is monitored and archived, your car is tracked, and even your face is scanned. The current power structure grows more fearful every day of your desire for anonymity, independence, free association, freedom of movement, freedom of expression, and your freedom of thought. And entire categories of humans will be targeted. And if they, them, those that won't leave us alone, determine that we are not within their control, then we will be categorized as out of control. 
freedomsphoenix.com will launch the next phase of the Levolution by the end of the summer of 2014. And if you have to tell your neighbors about it, then we did it wrong. The three most important things you can do for Free Talk Live are, one, share one episode a week on Facebook or in some other social networking site. Two, buy the things you buy online through shop.freetalklive.com. Three, give five bucks a month to the AMP program. It's my firm belief that Free Talk Live's AMP program is the best use of your charitable dollar among liberty-oriented organizations. Support all the organizations you love. But make sure you give five bucks a month to AMP at amp.freetalklive.com. Are you a political activist who does things that the government might not like? Then this free ebook may save your life. RATS is your guide to protecting yourself against snitches, informers, informants, agents provocateur, narcs, finks, and similar vermin. RATS was written by OG libertarian Claire Wolf. RATS is a short book, easy to read, and available free in many formats. Download RATS free at rats-nosnitch.com. That's rats-nosnitch.com. Do you love Twitter? Make sure you favorite the LRN.FM Twitter account so you can receive our tweets at twitter.lrn.fm. That's twitter.lrn.fm. This is Free Talk Live, live Saturday edition of the program. We can take your calls about anything you want. Actually, you have some pretty exciting technical news here that uh, we're going to share about helping people all around the globe who don't have access to the internet get information in a way that has heretofore been uh, impossible. I'm pretty excited about it. It's called Outernet. Uh, their website is outernet.is. We'll continue that discussion here. or We'll kind of actually get into it. We just barely scratched the surface in the last segment. Uh, the we tonight includes me, Ian. And Mark. And don't forget, you can join us online at freetalklive.com. Free Talk Live is brought to you by Keenvention. It's coming up. Keenvention 2014 is October 31st through November 2nd. And it's happening here in beautiful Keene, New Hampshire, which is where we host this radio program. There will be pre- probably, you know, if it's anything like last year, which was the first year, we'll have about 100 people uh, showing up. And and uh, we'll be talking about activism, the variety of activism that you'll find here in New Hampshire with, of course, the Free State Project moving here to New Hampshire with thousands of liberty-oriented people making the move and getting active here. We want to focus on those activists and what they're doing, and that's what we'll be doing with uh, with Keenvention. There will also be some fun social events like our Friday night Halloween party for the very first time ever, uh, thrown by our very own Derek J. Freeman. So go to Keenvention.info, learn more about the event there, get hotel information. It's 60 bucks That gets you in for the entire weekend at Keenvention. It's a great price for a, a really, what I thought was a really fun event last year. Keenvention.info as we continue here, the story from Fast Company about Outernet. Outernet.is is their website. It's a, a, pr- a proposal to provide access sort of to the internet to 4 billion people around the world. To all the people who do not have internet access. I was shocked when I saw that number because here, you know, we're used, we're living in an urban area. There's plenty of internet available where you and I are, Mark, and it's easy to take for granted that, well, other people must have this access too. Turns out they don't have it. Yeah, their Uh, problem's clean water. Yeah, it may come as a shock to anyone reading this article, uh, but it, but as pervasive as the Internet is in 2014, two-thirds of the world still does not and has never had access to it. That's almost 4 billion people who don't enjoy the same access to the open and free information that you and I do. That 60% doesn't even cover when man or nature steps in to take the infrastructure out. We're just talking about people living in places too remote, too costly, or too poverty-stricken to make it worthwhile to set up Internet infrastructure. But more and more, access to information seems like a basic human right. Now, I don't agree with that particular perspective, but I understand why people feel that way. Right up there with access to clean water. Everything I've gotten used to is a human right. And that's exactly the attitude of Syed Karim, the uh, creator of Outernet, a free, universally accessible information service that beams internet information, be it entire websites like Wikipedia, emergency broadcast messages, or video classes from the Khan Academy to any Wi-Fi-enabled device across the globe. 
We fundamentally believe that in order for our species to advance, for humanity to get to the next step of development, that no one can be denied a certain level of education and information. If there's a curiosity, it should be satiated. And that's a fine belief to have. And this man is moving to do it on his own. He's not asking a, you know, to force people into paying for his program. He's come up with an idea, and he's moved ahead with it, and he's found supporters. And it is, as Fast Company points out, an ambitious project. Using open source hardware and software, Kareem and his team will launch hundreds of nano satellites into low Earth orbit in 2016. These satellites will encircle the planet, delivering packets of information, much in the way BitTorrent does now, to anyone on the globe as long as they have a Wi-Fi-enabled device. Now, uh, that statement is different from my understanding of this particular program and, uh, and how it works. I don't know about these little low Earth satellites, the hundreds of them. What I know is that, and, and maybe the plan, maybe this journalist didn't really understand what the plan was, but my understanding, at least in its current iteration, is what they're doing is they're renting time on free-to-air satellite systems. Just like we are, Mark. You and I have, uh, I've got a LRN.FM, it's our little, my little internet network, and I put it on free-to-air satellite. Well, the reason they want to put their own satellites up is so they're not beholden to anyone. Oh, I see what you're saying. Okay. And they are little satellite, little tiny boxes that oh, float okay. up in the sky, and they, they would have more control, and they'd be able to cover more stuff. Ah, well, right now they're not doing that part of it. They do have their signal up, though. They've actually got the signal up. It's operational. So this isn't just pie in the sky. Uh, this... I don't know if that wasn't intent. It wasn't intended as a pun, but uh, this is happening. This is real. It's not just an idea. Anyway, he says, I've been thinking about this problem for almost seven years. I started actively working on it about four years ago. And uh, he originally enrolled in graduate school, et cetera, et cetera. But only after he left graduate school and began working for Chicago Public Radio, this idea fully took shape. And uh, he was asked to head a product development at Chicago Public Radio, where he began exploring data casting in more detail. It's data casting that lies at the heart of the outer net, and it's also why his solution is so much less expensive and easier to deploy than other global internet networks like Facebook's Internet.org and Google's Project Loon. Now, I have to admit, I don't know anything about those other two projects. So I'm interested in learning about those it's as like well. It's like drug dealers that give you the first one free. OuterNet is a one-way platform, and this is one of the ways it's different. It will broadcast free data to any Wi-Fi device on the planet, but will not at first allow those receiving the broadcasts to broadcast back. So essentially what they're doing is they're selecting a library of content. Yeah. They're uh, they're cu sort of curating the internet, so to speak. Uh, okay, Wikipedia, that's a no-brainer, right? Let's yeah, put that's the one. Put Wikipedia up there and other informational stuff. And, and porn. Lots of porn. I don't think you're going to get that, Mark. No, the, that uh, would be good. No, the bandwidth is very limited on OuterNet. They, okay. Uh, you know, they're paying for bandwidth to up on Galaxy 19 satellite across North and Central America. I just heard that the internet was for porn, so I assumed that, that would be what it would be about. They're also up on Hotbird across Europe and uh, in the Middle East. So they've covered already quite a bit of uh, of the globe just getting on those two satellites. So anyone with a free-to-air receiving dish and the right equipment can do this. They can receive this signal and they can then broadcast that signal out via Wi-Fi. So sort of the example is that, you know, some village out in the middle of nowhere with no infrastructure whatsoever, but except for a generator to, you know, make power, can have internet now, essentially. They can have this one-way internet, which would deliver all kinds of information, which heretofore has been impossible to deliver uh, to these places. It's really great that uh, some, kid, uh, some kids out in, you know, some remote village can you know, when they turn on the generator or the one hour a day, they that uh, the school can use it to get Wikipedia. Our initial focus is on solving a very specific problem, the lack of access to a basic level of information and education for all of humanity. He says OuterNet's not the Internet. It's simply the fastest and least expensive way to deliver rich content to the large fraction of humanity who cannot afford the information that many of us take for granted. Once that's addressed, we'll work on the more complicated and significantly more expensive task of providing low-cost, two-way Internet access. But that one-way information is nothing to scoff at. For the first time ever, an additional 4 billion people would be able to receive, download, and store data locally on any Wi-Fi device. Now, just to be clear, 
you, uh, you you don't just get to carry around a Wi-Fi device and receive Wikipedia on it with OuterNet. You have to have a satellite dish receive the signal first, then Broadcast. hook into a Wi-Fi router or something that can Got then it. create an access point Understood. that anyone with a Wi-Fi I device can access. I wondered about that. Yeah. So uh, the humanitarian and political implications of this are huge. In a natural disaster scenario like Philippine tycoon or t- tycoon typhoon outernet could have easily broadcast entire websites full of medical and rescue advice to victims across the country in ukraine it could have enabled those in the resistance movement to share up-to-date information from one wi-fi device to the next no matter if russian sympathizers took down all of the country's internet service providers so i have to say I'm pretty excited about this. The Fast Company article gets into more details about it. I've actually reached out to uh, Outernet, and uh, they're looking for content partners. So, of course, I thought, well, gosh, we can provide content. We do that pretty good here at Free Talk Live. We uh, you know, do a show seven nights a week, and they can put out there whatever they want to put out there. So maybe they'd be interested. I don't know. The, the pitch that I sent... The guy that responded said he was interested. He wanted to talk, and so we'll see what happens. I think it would be pretty cool. Uh, let's go to the phones and to your calls and thoughts. We've got Brock. He's in Guilford, New Hampshire. You're on Free Talk Live. Hello, Brock. Hi, Ian. How are you? Welcome. You're on the air. I, thank you. I'm um, just out in the rain here, sitting in the car, but I was listening to uh, 1350 AM. That's how high tech I am. I'm listening to the AM radio. Yeah, that, W-E-Z-S. Uh, it's a great station out yeah. in Laconia. Well, they'd be better if they broadcast you all week. So I'll uh, be good. I've got good news for you. If you're up at four in the morning, you can hear Free Talk Live all week long. <laughs> I, I was, I was the other night. Uh, let's, I think I woke up to how to make uh, acid run through an engine block. <laughs> yep, that would. That sounds that? like Free Talk Live. Thermite. Yes, <laughs> very, very interesting. And, Brock, um, you've got about twenty uh, seconds here. I apologize for the short shrift. That's okay. I just want to, you. You had a topic earlier that made me want to call, and you're talking about ISIS and comparing America, and and I just want to remind the people: don't forget Waco, Ruby Ridge, and all the other like move, and uh, you know all the other times America's bombed its own people, mm. killed children doing so. So I believe ISIS is just another branch of our own government. Well, that's a great point. And, uh, ISIS wants to be a state, just like every other state. They're killers and they're dangerous. Yeah. And uh, the yes, difference sir. between them is really, you know, difference in degrees. States killed more people in the 20th century than heart disease did. Absolutely true. Brock, thanks for your call, man. I appreciate hearing from you. And I'll put a link up to Outernet on our Facebook, Google+, Plus, and Twitter. You can check them out on your own time. I'm pretty excited about it. Uh, and we'll come back with more tomorrow night for the live Sunday edition of Free Talk Live. See you then. Since time began, tyrants have taken aim at personal liberties. Now there's a movie that aims back. The government has no more right to tell us what to put in our bodies than they have to take our guns or tell us what books we can read. Six drug police were eaten by bears while raiding a marijuana farm. On your knees, you dirty hippies! Jesus. On your knees! What's the problem, officer? Today, many cops who enforce pot laws do so only because it provides them with cushy jobs, good benefits, and a chance to push people around. I was an undercover narcotics officer. The drug war is nothing but a farce. The Second Amendment says you gotta keep you and your gat intact. Guns and Weed, The Road to Freedom. A film by Michael W. Dean and Nima Vidati. DVD available now at GunsAndWeed.com or on Amazon. That's GunsAndWeed.com. Makes the perfect gift. Remember, that's GunsAndWeed.com. If you want to move to the free state and you're looking for some real estate, well, I know a guy who's really great. It's the Realtor Mark Warden. Do you want a home with 20 acres, a lakeside cabin, any takers for renters, buyers, and sellers too? Mark Warden is the guy for you. PorcupineRealEstate.com You can listen to Free Talk Live on the radio, podcast, satellite, webcam, and our live streams. But did you know you can listen to Free Talk Live from any phone, anywhere? Add this number to your phone. 213-493-0308. It's a long-distance call, so make sure you're familiar with your phone's calling plan. The Listen Lines are airing the latest episode of Free Talk Live 24 hours a day, including our live shows. Call 213-493-0308. That's 213-493-0308. 
The live edition of Off the Air Live is next after the news here on the Liberty Radio Network, LRN.FM. From Keenan in the Shire, the Liberty Media Capital of the World, this is Daryl W. Perry, host of FPP Radio News for Saturday, September 13th, 2014. Silver is trading at $18.64 per ounce. Gold is valued at $1,229 per ounce. And according to BitcoinAverage.com, the average price of Bitcoin is $481. The Telegraph reports, the mother of murdered journalist James Foley has said he was let down by the U.S. government and that she was embarrassed and appalled at the way the family was treated. Diane Foley told CNN that they were treated as an annoyance and at one stage even threatened with arrest if they attempted to raise a ransom to try to secure his release. The 40-year-old journalist was beheaded, apparently by an ISIS fanatic with a British accent, and a video of his murder was released by the group last month. In the months leading up to his death, the Foley family was contacted by ISIS with large ransom demands which they were unable to meet. Like the UK, but unlike much of Europe, the US has a policy of refusing to pay hostage takers. Foley told CNN that members of her family were warned that paying a ransom was illegal and that they might be prosecuted. FPP Radio News is brought to you by Roberts and Roberts Brokerage. For over 35 years, Roberts and Roberts has been a trusted source for buying and selling your investment grade precious metals. They now take Bitcoin for purchasing precious metals so you can turn your profits into a long term investment. Call Roberts and Roberts today for knowledgeable advice on investing. 800 874 9760. Reuters reports a U.S. Court of Appeals in Chicago said on Friday that Wisconsin can implement its 2012 law requiring voters to present photo ID at the ballot box, allowing the state to put the new rules into effect at the general election in November. The rush order from the 7th U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals, which heard arguments for and against the law earlier on Friday, is temporary while the court works on its definitive ruling on the issue. At the hearing on Friday, Wisconsin had asked a three-judge panel, all of them appointed by Republican administrations, to urgently lift a lower court's injunction against the voter ID law. Similar voter ID rules have become a political and racial flashpoint across the United States. A federal district court in Wisconsin ruled in April that the law was unconstitutional, even though it was upheld in a separate ruling by the state's Supreme Court. Wisconsin's Attorney General appealed the district court ruling to the Seventh Circuit Court. The ACLU and other groups have challenged the law, saying that it discriminates against the poor and minorities who are less likely to have photo IDs or the underlying documents needed to obtain IDs. In the spirit of Motorhome Diaries and Liberty on Tour, I intend to take the message of peace, love, and liberty on the road. During the 104-day trip, I'll be visiting at least 10 cities across the country, speaking to people about the ideas of peace, love, and liberty. To find out more about the tour or to donate, visit tour.fppradio.com. That's T-O-U-R dot F-P-P-Radio dot com. The Associated Press reports a ballot initiative that would have asked voters to split California into six separate states failed to qualify for the ballot in 2016, according to the Secretary of State's office on Friday. Silicon Valley venture capitalist Tim Draper submitted 1.37 million signatures in July in support of the measure, saying that the state with 38.3 million people has become ungovernable because it has too many diverse interests for politicians to effectively represent their constituents. A random sampling of ballot initiative signatures from all 58 counties found that just 66% were projected to be valid and that it would fall more than 500,000 signatures short of the number needed to make the ballot. Draper sought to split California into six states called Jefferson, North California, Silicon Valley, Central California, West California, and South California. Draper, who has so far put more than $5 million into the effort, said in a statement on Friday that he believed enough signatures were valid and that a full review would prove that. He said, six Californias will conduct a review of the signatures determined to be invalid. The internal verification process conducted by our signature gathering firm predicted a much higher validity rate than the random sample result. 
Draper's effort is not linked to a separate movement that would allow some northern counties to split from California to form a new state of Jefferson. This has been FPP Radio News, online at fppradio.com. Researchers at Princeton University's Department of Sociology have made a major leap in our understanding of social interaction. We conducted trials in 90 supermarkets across the country and found that essentially 100% of people 